excellent to each other and party on. We're back for another Legacy League, and today we're playing Yorian Espervile with the Turbo Overlord of the Bailmark combo in it. Let me explain how this works. This creature is brand new. It comes into play, and it comes in as an enchantment if you cast it for its impending cost, which you're usually going to do because the impending cost is only one colorless and one black mana as opposed to five mana. Now, you can, of course pay the full price late in the game. And that's one of the great things about this card is it's just got a lot of flexibility. But let's say you pay the impending cost. It comes into play. You immediately get a beneficial trigger. You get to mill four cards and then choose any car, uh, any creature or planeswalker in your graveyard and return it to your hand. So it's like a regrowth for creatures or planeswalkers with the stipulation that Overlord can't regrow another Overlord. It can't get back avatars. But other than that, it's a really good ETB, and it's a really strong body if you can flip it. Now, the way you flip it, of course, is you wait five turns, and eventually it becomes a creature. And then every single time it attacks, it also gets that same trigger where it gets to mill four cards and return a card. So very strong card, but waiting five turns in this economy? No way. We're going to be cheating it into its final form quickly. The way we're going to do that is with Felia, who can exile any permanent and return it to the battlefield end step, and get this trigger again. And now you got the 5-5 five five that gets the trigger every turn it attacks. We also have four Flicker Wisps. And these can hit it and flip it. So there are eight ways to immediately flip it. And then uh, we also have other cards that are beneficial when you blink them. Such as Guild the Drake. Steal one of your opponent's creatures. Oh, I'll blink that. I'll steal another creature. I'll, I'll just keep giving you this Drake over and over again. And taking your like every creature on your board. Very powerful against creature strategies, which is most of Legacy right now. I would say the top four decks, I'll, I'll go ahead and talk about sideboarding real quick. So most of the meta is either Eldrazi or Painter. We've got four blasts here um, for, for dealing with Painter or Moon Stompy, one of the two red variants, both of which are very strong. Or it's Blue Black Reanimator. And of course, if it's Blue Black Tempo, or some other type of tempo deck, we're pre-boarded. If it's a combo deck, we're going to bring in the consigns. We're also going to bring in the forces, and we might even bring in the blasts. Like against the Epic Storm, you just take 10 cards and dump them in and remove all your removal, for example. So this sideboard is very much focused on beating the top decks, uh, which we're likely to encounter, and not being completely dead against, you know, glass cannon combo decks, which I recorded the league yesterday, and five out of five uh, rounds were against combo decks. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. So this just has the best instance ever printed. Force of Will, Brainstorm, Source to Plowshares. It has Aether Vial, which is why it's called Esper Vial, uh, because you're vialing things in. You're not necessarily paying three mana to get a Flicker Wisp. You're putting it in uncounterably at instant speed off of Aether Vial and perhaps in combat and doing consequential things, right? Uh, so Gilded Drake, there is uh, risk and return here. You're giving your opponent basically a flip Delver. Um, you need to be able to block that. So we have Baleful Strix. Uh, we also have, uh, I think, not 11 ways to bounce it back or, or blink it. So we've got Baron, Tolarian Archmage, which is not a playable legacy card, but it's quite good in this deck because you can bounce Gilded Drake to your hand or you can bounce really anything to your hand and get value. You can even draw cards. You can use it to uh, bounce your opponent's creatures back to their hand if they reanimated something scary, bounce it back to their hand and deal with it later. Teferi similarly bounces stuff back to hand uh, and draws cards. So this is basically Teferi in creature form. Uh, Teferi is a little bit more flexible in that it can bounce any uh, artifact, enchantment, or creature, whereas this can only bounce uh, creatures, I believe, or planeswalkers. Yeah, so this is going to hit planeswalkers. This can't. So what, it's interesting they have like a little bit of overlap there. Anyway, uh, we're also playing, of course, four Psychic Frog because it's blue, pitches to force, and a very strong card. And four Tamiyo because it's blue, pitches to force, and is a very strong card. Let's take a look at the mana base. So, oh, and four Solitude. This is absolutely key. You need to be able to instant speed exile permanence. And, and I'm not saying destroy i'm saying exile because reanimator like you kill that troll with like uh you know a dismember or something it's coming back the next time they miracle a uh, metamorphosis fanatic into play you haven't really dealt with it all you've done is delay it right um but solitude does deal with it and so does plow so we are fully on the exile based removal train here um the mana base though so I love fetches. You'll probably never run into somebody who plays more fetches than I do. I think fetches are insane. 
they just give you so much flexibility and they give you the ability to kind of play around wasteland and to surveil and do all these things. I want to draw as many fetches as I can. I want to draw as few fetchables as I can. I, I don't want to draw these naturally. Uh, so I want to have selection to go get what I want, which is usually probably going to be a basic island right now with the amount of wastelands and, and sowing micro spawns and stuff. Um, and occasionally will be a surveillance or a duel. Um, but we are playing for wasteland and that is a concession to the fact that I took out what would normally be uh, a way to go get Harbinger of the Seas, which is a very strong card against Eldrazi and land strategies. I took out all of our recruiters because they're slow and they kind of suck. Like three mana for a one, one creature that goes and gets another spell. That, and that's what you're actually wanting to cast. Like that is just too slow in legacy, in my humble opinion. Now I could be wrong. Uh, I may eat my words and go back to playing uh, recruiter of the guard, but I genuinely think that, you know, flicker wisp has more synergy with the rest of the deck. So that's the big experiment for today. Flicker wisp over recruiter. But in doing so, we do kind of have to go back to wastelands because we have to have a way to deal with wastelands or with uh, non basic lands that are problematic, such as tabernacle, such as maze of Ith, such as, um, you know, Urza Saga, things like that. Urza Saga is not as big a deal because uh, Felia and Flicker Wisp can get rid of the constructs. That's a pretty exhaustive deck tech. Let's go to the rounds. So I, as always, I'm going to play a full five rounds. I'm going to say literally every thought that enters my mind. Hopefully that's helpful for you because you're going to see me making lots of decisions. You're going to be questioning whether those decisions are good and I'm going to be doing my best to justify those decisions. And then your job is to go into the comments with the timestamp and argue that I made a bad play. And that helps everybody. That helps me. Of course, I read every single comment. I always reply to comments and I never shoot the messenger. I just want to get better. And even if I disagree with you, I will politely disagree with you. But more often than not, I'm going to agree with you and I'm going to get better as a result. And so will everybody else who's reading those comments. So leave a comment with the timestamp if you see anything and have fun. Let's go play some magic. Round one, right off the bat, we are likely against Blue Black Reanimator. So we're gonna go ahead and test our might immediately. If we are against that or any creature deck, this is an insane hand. I'm gonna keep this. One thing to note is, uh, I didn't say this during the deck check, during that seven minutes or so that I was talking about the deck, uh, but it is worth noting that we do have 20 white cards and like 26, 27 like blue cards. We've got a really good mix of uh, cards that we can potentially pitch. Okay, so it looks like we're likely up against Carnforge here which is scary. All right, so I'm most likely just gonna be surveilling here unless they put something into play. I definitely don't wanna draw any more lands. I don't need to care about basic lands. So I'll almost certainly just go get the uh, Meticulous Archive in their end step. We don't really have anything we can do here other than you know Plow, Solitude, stuff like that. I'm not worried about Constructs because Felia should be able to deal with that. Constructs can get really big here, but Okay, and this is great. It doesn't look like they are gonna explode on us. It looks like they're taking the construct plan. So we'll meticulous archive here, and what we're really looking for is, um, I mean, I wouldn't mind finding like an overlord. Strix is really good. This trades with the construct and draws us a card. The problem with Strix though is, if we play it out, then we can't Felia, and Felia does give us the element of surprise. Okay, let's think about how much damage we're gonna take here. We're gonna take, they're gonna have uh, one, two, they've got four cards. They could have like uh, a lot more artifacts in hand. It might make sense to go ahead and play out the Strix here. It also draws us into a card and gives us more cards we can pitch to Solitude. I think I'm gonna go ahead and play out Strix. We're not at, ri at risk of like going to discard or anything. It just advances our plan and it tells our opponent, sorry, Charlie, you're not gonna be able to uh, steamroll us. This land is gonna go away. This land will go away when they play their next card. Uh, mana may not be a gating factor for them. We'll see. The more clever thing to do is to just wait to end step and then flash in Felia, and then we can attack and immediately exile it. And that's probably actually the line we should have taken there. Um, but I, my value instincts are too strong. I'm just like, oh, value, gotta draw cards. And now we, we drew a redundant land, so it doesn't really matter that we drew this card. Felia didn't really have anything important that she was going to do other than just blink constructs. But if they do decide to put a second construct into play, and I think they're going to try to overpower us. Oh, they're not. Okay, well, this is bad. And it's quite possible that had I not done anything, they would have just stayed on the construct plan. So I do think I punted by playing out the Strix. Okay. Legend rolling the City of Traders. If they play Karn, I'll be sad. 
I would love. Oh, I'll be really sad if they play like uh, what's it called? The uh, Paradox Engine, the One Ring. That's. I mean, that sucks, but it's not the end of the world. No, they can start drawing a whole lot of cards. It is kind of the end of the world, isn't it? I'm not playing anything to get rid of that, by the way. Like I could to ferry it back to hand, but that's about all I can do. Yep, drawing uh, three cards in a turn, pretty good. And next turn, they'll draw a lot more than that. Another key. Okay, let's just draw more. Do they ha they have any more mana? Okay, so that sucks. Uh, they are not even going to bother attacking. I'm not sure what they're drawing to to get rid of this. I'm not, I don't think they play remo removal in their deck, but maybe they have like a walking blister or something. All right. Archmage does bounce this to hand cleanly, but does that really even matter? Hmm. I, I don't think Archimage is the play. I think what we probably do is we instep Felia and we can exile the ring, which is not particularly strong, but they'll get protection until their next upkeep, right? So that removes the, uh, but I mean, they can just keep drawing cards. I don't see a path to victory here, but I'm pretty sure that surveilling is better than putting like Baron into play. So I'm just going to chill and then I'll instep Felia. We do have lots of things we can do. We can plow if they if they get like a glaring flesh raker. Giving them life also basically means that they're gonna be able to keep going with the one ring. Yep. And they basically have like so much mana because they can use this to untap this, and then they can use this to untap. Oh, that. Uh, that's fine. But I am going to go ahead and plow it. And I'm gonna plow and keep. Oh, I have to plow. I can't solitude right now. I'll go ahead and do this now. Yeah, you don't leave that in play. Like, as soon as you get priority, you get rid of that. I don't believe they have any counter magic in their deck. Their deck is, like, monocolorless. Okay, they're going to draw some cards here in response. But I don't believe they have anything they can cast at instant speed, other than maybe, like... Oh, so they do have... Uh, what's it called? Uh, Coslix Command. And they can burn me for a lot if they Coslix command here in response to this. So what I'll probably do is if they Coslix command, I'll go ahead and fetch and I'll plow it a second time just to avoid them making like a ton of dudes. Yeah, it looks like that's what's happening here. Okay, so let's see, X equals two. They're just gonna make two dudes. Do I wanna burn a plow just for that? I don't think so, because I can still put in Felia. They're, they, I can't stop this. All I can do is stop them from doing two damage to me and creating two uh, tokens. But X equals two is not the scariest. I'm going to let that happen. So you can see every time this, something comes into play, we get pinged and we lose life. So essentially plowing a second time would have denied them two mana. and Three mana? X equals two? Why do they get... Oh, yeah. Oh, they get extra... <laughs> what, what modes do they choose? I guess they chose the uh, put Eldrazi spells into play. No, wait. I should have. I, I thought it would be. Uh, oh, so they scried and they created two. So we're, we're still going to take. Uh, is that it? We just take two? Oh, I guess they get one for the spell they cast and then they get one. And then they're going to get a fourth one. I was just confused about the total number of triggers that went on the stack. Okay, so they're adding more. Are they going to cause command again? Looks like they are. Telling Gates of. Maldara. Oh, um, I actually don't really care about that. Plowing a second time. I can just plow next turn. I, I want to get Felia in. So yeah, that's fine. Whatever. You fizzled my, uh, my plow. I mean, they, I guess that's the removal spell. Cause I was saying like, I don't think they play any removal, but they, you know, this is like when you have the one ring out and you're drawing all these cards, like removing a card from play for a turn is like practically the same as just exiling it forever because the game's not going to last very long. Okay, they got the two mana. This vine, even more mana. All right, so I'll go ahead and put Felia in and uh, we can eliminate that construct probably. I don't know what else we would get rid of. I mean, I could reset the one ring, but again, like the one ring is just going to... Yeah, I'll just do this. It doesn't matter what colors I get, like as long as I can cast my cards. I do want to err on the side of getting white because now I'm playing Flicker Wisp before that wasn't really a consideration. All right. So we can attack and do a negligible amount of damage here. Um, yeah, I guess we um, 
okay, the question is, is it better for me to draw a random card, which could be force of will, which vexing valve was out, so that's not gonna matter. I think what I'm gonna do is, when this returns during their upkeep, then I'll plow again, and then they'll have to uh, probably do a bunch of shenanigans to draw a card and try to Coslex command. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty, pretty terrible, but I think getting this construct off the table is fine. They, one thing that's worth noting, I should have uh, played out Caracas before, just in case, like they did have something that we're gonna do. They can still Kozlik command. They do have mana, just not a ton. Okay, so we're gonna do three damage. They're gonna take three from their ring. I'm gonna play this out. Um, I don't think it really matters, but it is nice to be able to block, uh, bounce that. And then I guess the question is, do I wanna play out Frog? And I think I do. I don't think Frog is gonna be of consequence, but who knows? All right, they're taking three from the ring. They're dropping to 12. I mean, if they find Paradox Engine, it should be GG. I assume that they have some sort of game-winning thing or a Karn or something that ends the game. All right, as soon as we have priority, I think we go ahead and we plow here. I wouldn't be surprised at all if they have, because uh, they just played a second one. So I think they can just burn us out, most likely. Okay, they'll let that go. So they do get a trigger from it, even though, uh, because, wait. Yeah, I, th I think actually if I put a stop in their upkeep, I could have uh, gotten rid of it. Because this is till next upkeep, right? Phases out, yeah, and the phase out. Yeah, so that was a misplay. I could have denied them a ping and that. Yeah, but I think at this point they can just glaring flesh for us to death. All right, and I'm just gonna F6. Uh, I, that does give away the fact that they can do whatever they want, but I don't really want to burn a whole bunch of clock confirming every single little thing they do. Okay, that, so that does get countered by their Vexing Bubble. I'm gonna un F6 just to confuse them a little bit. It, it's not that long. My client seems to be running a lot faster than it was yesterday. So they have currently six, you know, seven, eight, like eight mana maybe. There's the Mystic Forge. This is where they start going absolute sicko mode. We'll take key. Yeah, now, now they're really taking off. I am gonna F6 now. Because they, they're going to take a bunch of game actions. But basically, um, the only reason I wasn't going to F6 is because if I needed to like do something to, to you know defend Frog, but that's not going to matter. Uh, bouncing uh, Felia with Caracas is not going to matter. That's not going to be a game-deciding play at this point. But I am going to make them play it out because their clock is slightly, they're slightly behind me in, or, or ahead of me in time. And I want to like narrow it a little bit. We have a great sideboard against this, by the way. We've got eight consigned memories. We've got two force negations. And uh, we can probably take out some of our removal. We could probably take out Solitude. There's the Coslex command for a ton of mana. X equals seven. Yeah, we're dead. I'll just make them click through it just to eat up a little more of their clock and while we take, think about our sideboard. So um, let's view sideboard. So we're bringing in 10 cards, or we're bringing in six cards. So I think we take out Solitude because of uh, Bobble. It, Solitude does make, uh, Bobble does make Solitude basically uncastable. Okay, one. Okay, and there's the final one. Even though it gets countered, we take it. So what else am I gonna take out? I, I think Gilded Drake could be cut. It is a blue card. Why is this so big? I've never used that box. Uh, okay, so let's go over here. All right, Solitude's coming out. Flicker Wisp is good. I think Gilded Drake is the weakest card here just because, I mean, taking one of their constructs is not gonna do for us what it does for them because we don't have a lot of artifacts. We have some, we have Strix and Vile, but it's not, it's not gonna be of consequence. I'm not gonna take out the plows, I'll just take out these, I think. And we actually brought in a lot of blue cards, so our force count is flush enough. Baron's actively good, being able to bounce stuff. Uh, Teferi's not bad at all. Teferi does shut down them instant speeding stuff. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So a strong hand would be some combination of consigns, forces, and enough lands to get like the overlord combo into play, hopefully. 
Yeah, I mean, this is what we asked for. I'm going to keep this, and I don't think they're going to have an explosive turn one. I think they're likely... Can we play a Tameo? That's that's the real question. I like this Wasteland, too, by the way. We could just hold up Tameo for a turn. I kind of like holding up Tameo just in case we do need to force a negation or something, and then we can just get a Surveil for our first uh, land. Because that gives us Consign and Tameo. I can't imagine them doing two things, but I like the flexibility and I don't want to tap out a consign just in case they have some killer opening card. I will definitely waste an Urza Saga and we're leading with the least good fetch land in our deck. This can't, I mean, it doesn't really matter because we're not going to be fetching basics, but it is worth noting that I have several from Monolith. So I've actually heard that you're supposed to counter these cards. And since we're about to waste them, I think that's fine. I think I'm going to counter this and then I will waste uh, and then I'll play Tameo if I, if I get a blue card. White is more valuable here than black in general, so I'll just do that. The main thing is like if we deny their mana, if we're wastelanding them and uh, you know the actual keys that they draw, of which I think they play like eight, it just aren't nearly as consequential if they can't use them to cheat to get ahead in mana. All right, Consign is such a good card. Most played uh, card at Eternal Weekend. I think we can go ahead and play Teferi out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to risk it. And when I say risk it, like I think it's unlikely that they have like some other explosive thing they can do. Most likely they're going to play like an Urza Saga or they're going to play um, you know, a key or I don't know. But I, I, I have confidence that through our draw step and through the card we're going to get off the clue from Tameo, that we will be able to find a second blue card for Force Negation. A Brainstorm is the best draw on our deck because it allows us to put back some of these land. A uh, Psychic Frog wouldn't be terrible at this point. City of Traders, you love to see it because that is going to get Legend ruled. Okay, so they may have Glaring Flesh Raker here, which Force Negation wouldn't have done anything about anyway. Yeah, that's what they have. All right, so I feel definitely vindicated in my line so far. Whether we win or lose, the important thing is that we're playing tight. All right, so I am gonna just plow now. I, I'm not gonna risk anything. And then uh, we'll play out a, a potential surveil land. We'll attack. We are shields down next turn in terms of you know degenerate things they can do. But we are gonna be able to surveil and hopefully uh, set up some something good Okay, Legend Rolling Land. Oh, yes. Okay, I am totally fine with this. Um, now, uh, they can play a three drop. There's the Monolith. Unfortunately, we can't stop that. We have slowed their momentum a little bit. There's the key. So now they can tap the key and untap, and then they've got four mana, which is enough to play one ring, unfortunately. And that is that what they're doing? I'd much rather than play Karn. Actually... Karn would be even worse um, because they could get up to Lattice potentially. Deal. All right, yeah. So that wasn't the worst because we don't really care about flipping her. We just want the clues so we can draw into better stuff. I mean, you could argue that maybe we shouldn't have even um, played her out, but she's already paid for herself. So I'm going to get the Undercity Sewer so we've got our colors. Yeah, I can always get like uh, another white card, uh, white mana if I need to for Flaker Wisp. All right, so we're looking for blue card, but we'd prefer to get some action like a Wasteland would be great. I mean, this is a blue card, and then we do have Clue. Um, we are potentially dying to tokens, but I think it's important to ensure that we have a blue card next turn. I'm going to put this on top. I mean, technically next turn we do have, we can hold up Force of Negation. Hard cast. And if they don't, if they try to cast Flesh Raker. Okay, so let's think about this. We could be proactive and crack Clue and try to find something good, and then we still have a Force Up. Or we can hold up Force of Negation if they don't cast anything worth countering. Uh, they've got one card in hand. Then we can just, uh, and, and if they do start going the Construct route, it's not going to be a particularly scary Construct. I think it's more important to hold up force negation here and potential clue 
and uh, then we still have a blue card for four Slater. I would hate for the to crack a clue, and it's just another land. So I'll play this, so I do have the option of getting a surveil land. Although I would much rather um, just cast force of negation than uh, try to like hold this to get a surveil. So they have to use this mana to untap this if they want to do anything fancy here. Okay, so they use their spawn token. So they still are preserving the right to create saga tokens. So I think it's fine to just counter this. This is going to be a big problem. Well, I'm definitely going to counter it. So let me draw first in case I draw something that's a little more pitchable. This is definitely more pitchable. So we'll keep the force of negation. Yeah, I, I feel confident with this line. Force of negation is really strong. So if we don't draw anything good, we can still hold up force of negation next turn. Okay. That's a terrible land uh, for them to draw. It's just basically a colorless land. It is worth noting that I think you can play it at any point, uh, even if you've made your land drop, which is kind of cool. All right, so let's go ahead and get our under uh, meticulous archive. They do still have enough mana to make a construct here, but they're hellbent. So we're looking for action. Something that can exile constructs would be great. That is precisely the kind of card we want to dodge at this point. Because even with a force of negation, like if we're just hanging back, they, they can do a lot of damage with their constructs. Okay, well, I'm not going to complain about drawing it. We're one land away from being able to use Yorian, and I think I think it's worth the risk that they, I mean, they may just draw a land. I'm gonna go ahead and get Yorian here. And absolute worst case scenario, we have, uh, we probably wouldn't pitch Yorian at this point. We'd probably pitch Force because it, like Yorian is a game piece. Okay, here it comes. So it's gonna be a 3-3, three, three, and then it'll be a 5-5, five, five, uh, five, five probably. No, actually, yeah, they will be able to create enough mana to uh, because they can they can pay for manifold key, untap this, tap this. They're gonna have to spend a lot of mana on it. So I don't think I'm gonna have to force anything because I don't think they're gonna have enough mana left after they create this. But they are gonna hit for a lot, so we are gonna need to get something on the board soon. But the good news is we like pretty much every card in our deck at this point is something that deals with this. Even drawing a land, it no a land wouldn't help us really right now because. Uh, Yorian is just not big enough. Yorian's probably just going to get pitched unless we draw something remarkable. So we're taking five. So we're basically on a two-turn clock, sadly. And they got Vexing Bobble, which is a good card to get. All right. Can we draw something that matters? I mean, this is Yorian to chump for a turn. It's pretty terrible. This does hit the initial mana source. Okay, so if we hit the initial mana source, they don't have the mana to untap this, so they can't get the three mana. That feels super duper passive, but throwing Yorian under the under the proverbial bus here, what could we draw that could stop both of these later? Because they are gonna we could we could potentially draw like Baleful Strix into Baleful Strix. Any mox anything means we're dead. But I, I just think we're dead either way. Like we, we basically, I think we've already lost. I'm not gonna play Yorian. At least I hold up uh, Force Negation. This is really weak. This looks really weak and it is weak, but we're in a desperation situation here. And it's kind of unfortunate because I feel like we had a pretty good draw and uh, I'm not sure how this game slipped away, but we never drew any threats. We, we did draw a lot of land. We dodged a lot of land off the top. Maybe we shouldn't have drawn one of the, uh, there was a turn where I drew force and had I not, uh, had I surveilled the force away? Yeah, there were, I mean, there'd be a glaring flesh raker on the table right now. That would be pretty bad. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I think they forgot about that. Okay. They have no mana, but they have these giant constructs. We really need to get Strix into Strix or something good like that. Holy cow, this is good. This is what I'm talking about. Check this out. This is a chumper. I'll just hit one of them. And assuming they, they can't remove this somehow, we can chump for a turn and stay alive. And if even if we draw a land, we've got Yorian, which will potentially trade with this in its current situation. So they should attack. So we're in the abyss. As they say, there's this old Legends card, the abyss. 
every turn your opponent must sacrifice a creature. Actually, both players have to sacrifice a creature uh, in their upkeep. Like your upkeep, you sacrifice a creature. Kind of like drop a honey, but it doesn't ever go away. Unfortunately, <laughs> we can't play out Yorian, so we lost. Yeah, uh, we, we can fetch it to our death, I guess. Go out in style. Blah. Good games. All right, so uh, yeah. Uh, if we'd had the mana or like had a life, which I don't think there was really any opportunity to... I mean, have we played fewer fetches and more duels or something like that? But like that's results oriented thinking for sure. Um, yeah, I I could definitely see us, you know, worming our way out of that. <laughs> I don't I don't know if that's a good uh, expression to use. Like like slithering our way is uh, rank. Uh, what's a good adjective? Slipping our way out, slipping the chains of uh, the constructs. Got round two queued up. All right, we reveal Yorian. We're on the play against an unknown opponent with a heater hand. Uh, we have so many options here. So the force against unknown opponent is always good. And uh, I think we open Delta just because we don't know what they're on. And we may be able to get a surveil trigger. But this is almost certainly going to grab like, well, it's going to grab a blue source for sure because we've already got a swamp in hand. Uh, and then I think we go Psychic Frog. I mean, when in doubt, just jam. If I suspect they're on Wasteland strategy, which Scalding Tarn could be Delver, could be this could just be a generic blue fetch island. Tameo is fine. Draking Tameo doesn't really do anything, but I can play out of Strix. I am kind of worried that like our only uh, source gets wasted. I'll see what I draw here. I'm not going to fetch yet, um, but I might get a basic. Okay. Um, I could just play on basics. I mean, they, they've got a basic here. I suspect they're probably on blue-black tempo. Yeah, I'll get, I'll get my basic. I might be punished later. You know what? I, I'm thinking that I'm likely to be punished if I play on basics. I think I'm going to go ahead and get a Tundra here. Um, because what if I do draw? Um, yeah, I'll just play out strikes first. This prevents them from being able to attack in profitably. They'll have to like do some sort of brainstorm shenanigans to flipper. I will force to protect this. I'll pitch Drake. I mean, that's unfortunate. I think it's worth it. They may have a force of their own and I may have just put myself in a hole. Okay, it resolves and we get a card. Or unless they're gonna force it now. Okay, yeah, they're gonna force it now. Okay, well that sucks. Uh, but it's not the end of the world. Like. We do have mana and they don't. They're gonna be able to play out of land. They're not gonna be able to use Tameo for a while unless they can brainstorm now, in which case they have a really strong hand. But we had a strong hand too. So it's not like I'm you know, complaining or anything. We got what we needed and we went in on, uh, we were aggressive. Okay, uh, I think we go frog and then uh, if Vile gets, Countered, it's not the end of the world. But we do want to get Vile out. Frog here is not the worst. Um, Do we want to play Vile? Because we can jump the frog and put it in front of here. I think that's pretty weak, though. They're not going to, like, with the colors they're representing, they're unlikely to have um, anything that can um, disrupt our um, frog like damage wise. So we're not going to protect our frog with, uh, unless they are playing bolt. I mean, we did see that, but I'll, I'll take the risk. I'm going to get another Tundra here. I'm going to play this out. It's good to just play it out and have it taking up, even if we don't immediately have a use for it. Like eventually it will be at five and we'll be able to put Overlord in. We'll be able to put Solitude in. It's really strong. If the game goes long, the vial is a good investment. All right, planes, which confirms that, um, Keeping cards to pitch the Psychic Frog would not have been a winning strategy here. Whoa, they didn't attack. That was a mistake. There's like no risk. Even if I jump, I can't kill it in combat. So our opponent is playing more timid than they need to, which is going to work out to our favor. They're just keeping it. Okay, so they're keeping it back because what they want to be able to do is, um, is there a card that I could flip here that would be relevant? So I can go ahead and play this out, and I'll definitely, I'll, I'll just get back a Strix. I think that's good. And then I can threaten to attack with frog. And if they block, I can pitch my hand. 
If I pitch my hand, then they can plow, and then they've got Tamio to mine nothing, which is a dangerous proposition. So I think if they block, maybe I don't pitch my hand. I just accept it because it's not worth pitching my entire hand and uh, them just brainstorming and uh, flipping Tamio and then, you know, or worse, plowing. So I think I'll be ginger with my hand here. They're reading the card most likely. And I'm almost certain that they are going to block if I attack. I'm trying to think of a circumstance in which they wouldn't block. If, if they didn't block, that would mean they have neither plow nor brainstorm in their hand. They may have a force in their hand if they're taking this long to read it. Which, by all means, force it. With these colors, it's possible that they're on um, stand, uh, Stifled Knot. In which case, Gilded Drake is going to be really strong. Well, what did I say about Stifled Knot? They've got Doorkeeper Thrall right here. Uh, does this mean I get the 5-5 five five immediately? I think this... Uh, I, th I think we still get the counters. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of scary. Yeah, so we still get the counters, but we don't get the ability. But because it's an enchantment, I think we still do get the ability. Ah, oh, nice. Nice. Okay, so Strix, I think, is the the take here. Um, I mean, we could get a Tameo, and we could just immediately Pyro, which isn't terrible. Being able to play Tameo, instant speed. Yeah, I think I think that's fine. We can curve Tameo into Drake. I'm not gonna bother attacking. What I'll do is I'll uh, keep this up as uh, like I would. I'm not gonna pitch uh, Drake, but they don't know that. Yeah, the fact that it's not a creature like save the ETB. Noldrifter would be pretty scary here because it would flip the Tameo. That's fine. So they are gonna be able to flip Tameo. But I'm not that worried about Tam the most worrying thing Tamio could do would probably start, you know, be start regrowing Force of Wills. But actually, my hand doesn't have anything that I'm gonna cast. Uh, I could just use Vile now, so it's not that big of a deal. Best draws in my deck. I mean, anything that um, can flip Overlord would be good. But actually, oh yeah, Drake, Drake is not gonna be able to do anything with Doorkeeper Thrall out. So I'm not going to be able to drake my opponent's Dreadnought if they have it. So I probably should have gotten back Strix. Drake is a 3-3 flyer for two, which is kind of not great, but it's it's not terrible. Like if they ever make the mistake of attacking him with Doorkeeper Thrall, uh, Drake can get a lunch. I am going to go ahead and put Tamio in here. All right. So Vile is definitely going to take up here. Another Overlord is not bad. I think we go ahead and use it, and then we have instant speed um, Strix. And I do think Strix is the get here. I'm not terribly worried about this Tameo ultimating. This actually Baron can return Tameo to hand. So I'll, I'll consider getting that later. So we are going to get a clue here. Let's see if they have a plow. If they block, uh, will I pitch two cards? I think I will. No, what I'll do, oh, Baron, uh, I don't get a card for, uh, okay, so they didn't block. Well, let's go to block. Oh, yeah, I think I try to kill this. Because if I kill this, it's a pretty big coup. But I have to pitch two cards to do it. I think it's worth keeping Strix around just because Strix uh, can trade with anything they cast. Uh, I just don't want them to have a plow. Yeah, I'm being indecisive. I'm just gonna let that happen. Getting plowed would just be absolutely backbreaking if I pitched my hand. Okay, we get our impending triggers. But again, Baleful Strix, if they do have uh, you know, a menacing thing like a Null Drifter or something, Strix will trade one for one with it. Okay, interesting, they got a white source. Dress down? Oh, they're just cracking the clue. Yeah, that's fine. If for some reason they attack in, I will vile that Drake in and I will block. I don't I can't imagine them attacking in though. That would be foolhardy. If I had more cards in hand though, I would definitely trade to get that off the table. Okay, so they are trying to go Tamio Ultimate Root. So I think end step I do probably put in Drake just to be on the offensive here. Null Drifter. Yep, that's 
pretty good. That is a blocker for sure. We could draw like a plow is probably the best draw on our deck because if we get rid of this Null Drifter, suddenly it opens the floodgates and we can do a lot of damage to Tamiyo. Wasteland is bad news. It's not the worst. They're going after our tap one for some reason. Okay, so they're tapped out. So we can be reasonably confident that... I'm, I'm just trying to decide what to do here. Um, I think we just hold these cards. Hmm. We could put Strix in play. And then if we draw an Overlord, we could get Baron back and cast Baron to bounce Tamiyo. I think that's probably, that's like unlikely, but I think it's, it is a line. If we can take Null Drifter from them somehow, that, but that's like Christmas land thinking, you know, I think what we need to do is we need to put the Drake in and then we need to attack Tamiyo. And we're probably just going to lose the Drake. And they could very well have drawn a daze at this point. It, so if we do find an Overlord, you know, it may be dazed. Oh, this was my chance to uh, put Drake in, or put Belfastrix in, but I guess I'm going to hold it. It's just something to pitch a f uh, frog. Yeah, this may not be correct. Plow, please. So force, I don't think, is particularly good here. We're about to get ultimated in like one turn. I do think it's worth just playing out the Strix the old-fashioned way. We could crack a clue. We're not going to find Baron. Oh, we could find Flicker Wisp. We Flicker Wisp this out of this out of play, and then we uh, could attack in and do some damage to Tamio. I think it's worth cracking the clue here. Okay, we just found a land, which is not the best. Um, yeah, I don't think we attack. I don't think we we have good attacks here. This Drake is going to stop this from attacking, but it's not going to stop this from attacking. Clue is also the thing that I could have sacrificed a Null Drifter here. They may just keep it back because Tamiya Ultimate is pretty strong. Unfortunately, if we take up Aether Vial here, do we want to force that? If we force it, it doesn't really matter because it's like we won't have any cards to pitch to it. I think we just let this go. Null Drifter did not attack. Okay, that's good. They're they're playing conservatively, and they were playing conservatively when they didn't attack with Tamiyo earlier. All right, so I don't think we can tick up the Vile because I do want to be able to put a Flicker Wisp into play, and I have four of them. I'm going to try to find one now. Flicker Wisp doesn't trigger. Solitude doesn't trigger. This Doorkeeper Thrall is so strong against our deck. Like It's just like a, an absurdly powerful card against uh, ETB-heavy strategies like ours. This is a bad matchup. Uh, if we tick up, we're dead. Uh, I'm not going to do it because we still have some uh, not great but okay cards we could draw here. Actually, I'm not sure if there's anything we can draw here to save us. Teferi. Feli is too late. I think I'm just going to, uh, I'll make them kill us. <laughs> I'll just F6 and, uh, see how long they take to kill us. Cause you know, we're pretty close in time. I think most likely what they do is they ultimate, they get a bunch of, uh, Phyrexian Dreadnoughts. There's a second doorkeeper throw. I, I wasn't beating the first one forcing there, uh, wouldn't really matter. I don't think. Yeah. I mean, we've lost. I, I've just accepted that we've lost six and I'll just see a little bit more about their deck before we go to game two. So we're already pre-boarded for this. No, the, um, we can stop all their Phyrexian Dreadnoughts and their Null Drifters with um, Consign. So I think that's what we do. I am going to sacrifice, doesn't matter. I'm not gonna block. I imagine they just have a full grip of goodness over there. So I'm not even gonna cast anything. I'm just gonna wait. Dreadnought. We'll let them live the dream. I genuinely don't think Null Drifter is a good card. Uh, I've played a lot of Stone um, uh, Dreadnought on the channel. And I think that Dreadnought is a good card when everybody's not playing for Fiddle Push. Um, it, it is absolutely devastating when everybody's playing for Fiddle Push to deal with Frog and it incidentally kills your Dreadnoughts too. So this is why you let people play it out. They're still taking a bunch of game actions. All they need to do is turn the dread on sideways and I'm dead. Okay. 
So consigns come in. Now that we know what they're on, we're going to be a little bit more careful about walking into days. I don't think uh, walking into days would have been an issue there. Uh, or I don't think that was what cost us the game. I think what cost us the game was not finding an answer to their resolved, um, you know, uh, gate doorkeeper throw. I think we need to force that on site 100%. Flicker Wisp is really strong against their deck. If I mean, everything is contingent on them not getting doorkeeper throw because Flicker Wisp, you flicker a uh, dreadnought, it's the same as killing it. Um, I'm not going to take out any mana. I'm not going to take out Teferi because that can potentially bounce stuff. I'm not going to take out any creature based removal. Tamiya is not bad because the games do go long against this deck. Their, their deck is not like a, a turbo aggro deck. Solitude. I mean, Solitude, like just pitching some random card to get a, a, a 3 2 lifelink is not terrible. So the, the main challenge is what do we take out? I mean, the, the simple temptation is to just take out force because it's card negative. Um, we're on the play. I think we take out force. But do we want to take out force when we could be keeping... Uh, I think force is important here. Let's see. Consign really just stops their... Like if they're already winning and they already have an enabler on the table... The main issue is I can't think of anything to take out here. None of this stuff strikes me as cuttable. Gilded Drake is, you know, a Delver, essentially. But if we can Drake one of their monsters, it's so good. Maybe I cut two. Maybe I do two and two. I don't know. Seems like a cop-out. Number one priority is to keep uh, the... Yeah, and I guess if our number one priority is to keep... Doorkeeper throw off the table, then we probably should just keep the forces in and not worry about the consigns. I'll probably board back to four forces in the uh, post board game. So this does have solitude, but again, solitude can't hit doorkeeper throw. This does not have a second blue, uh, a second mana source, nor a path to it, and we think they're likely playing stifles. Mulligan this. This has consign. This has Drake. Solitude, again, probably the weakest card in the deck. I, I mean, you could definitely argue we should have taken it out. But if they cheat something big in another way, I think Wasteland is the card that we cut here. And I am going to be a coward and play on basics because I suspect they have uh, Stifles in their, in their deck. So let's do that now. And we'll pass. So we have Solitude up. Uh, but they don't ever turn one anything in. We have probably at least two turns. Tamiya's fine. Again, like, Tamiya flipping is not that big of a deal. I'm not that worried about it. You don't Drake Tamiya, uh, if you're wondering. Uh, you never Drake Tamiya because um, Draking Tamiya means that um, whenever you draw cards, they get the, the actual Planeswalker, so you're kind of helping them. So... We can play on basics, but that basically dooms Flicker Wisp in our hand. I can't both get a white source, and I, I'm not playing uh, Scrubland, and I don't think Scrubland's good. So I think I'm just going to get my basic swamp here, and I'm going to go for this. Which means that Flicker Wisp is almost certainly just going to be uh, pitch cast. Let's see if we find a land or a creature. We should find a creature statistically. We found a Psychic Frog that is good with the colors we're presenting. Psychic Frog unaffected by Doorkeeper Thrall. Overlord, of course, also famously unaffected, as we saw. Very cool. Yeah, as long as they don't have Doorkeeper Thrall, I'll feel like I'm in a decent position. Main question is, since I don't have any pressure on the table, if they attempt to brainstorm here, do I want a Solitude into a potential daze? I think I am going to do this. I mean... It's not the worst if it does bait out a daze. This Flicker Wisp is doing nothing. We're not even sure if the Solitude is going to be good later. I think likely they have a Force or a daze. They may board out their dazes on the draw. Wow, it worked. Yeah, I'll take that. I mean, it's not like we got a great trade, but we did stop a Planeswalker from coming in. So I'll take it. And then, uh, of course, Overlord can buy back Solitude if we need to get rid of something later. 
they may not even care about that. They may have like just an insane uh, Dreadnought hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Psychic Frog and I'm going to hope that they force that or daze it. And then we'll have uh, a path to a Drake on one of their robots. Holy cow, their brainstorm locked. I do give them something very productive to do if I play out the Psychic Frog and they can daze it. At the same time, um, that does get kind of like a time walk effect because they're just going to, oh, wow, it didn't get countered. Holy cow, we got <laughs> we got lucky. We got so lucky here that they brainstormed and they bricked. They didn't have days. Uh, they didn't have force. Like, what the heck is in their hand? Probably a whole bunch of AB cards. Here's a ponder. That's fine. If they can find a fetch, they probably have a plow for our frog. But, you know, we're doing our best here. Okay, they did find a fetch, so they can... Uh, they did not shuffle, so they're shuffling now. I imagine this is going to be a Tundra into Plow, which is the only sane thing to do when somebody's got a frog. All right. So we do have this impending thing going for us, and we did draw a pretty good card. So I'm just going to do that, and I'm going to chill. Overlord is good once it hits the table, even if they plow it. Uh, well, if they plow it, then we don't get a second trigger. We have to attack with it. So it has to survive like an entire opponent's turn. There's another cantrip, which is fine. They probably have 19 mana sources, maybe 20 in their 40 card deck, 45 card deck, or 19 minus two, but they bricked again. Holy guacamole. Is Overlord going to be able to go? That's great. This is very good for us. I'll surveil end step. Get a white mana. Or uh, their end step. This is like the luckiest game of all time. All right. The fact that they've cast three cantrips and found exactly two lanes warms my heart. Um, I mean, it's not the worst. This does get a fetch uh, another land. I'm going to bend it for action. I mean, like, normally against a Day's Wasteland, potentially Stifle deck, you do want to do that. Oh, that's another thing is they could have Stifles in their hand. So they might be able to Stifle this last trigger. What happens? I, I'm not sure if they Stifle the trigger, if that actually stops it from becoming a creature. Okay, we're just drawing, you know, chaff. But th this is not bad by any means. This is like an answer to the worst things their deck can do. It's just not anything proactive. So our hand is like extremely defensive, which is unfortunate. It does not line up with our opponent's like very mana screwed current state. And also if they rip a wasteland, they can remove our plow and we're in a bad way. But the fact that they got brainstorm locked means we probably have two more turns where we can attack this and generate, generate value. If they don't have some way to remove it. Okay. They just conceded. Yeah. They just got extremely unlucky. Like I don't, I mean, if they're playing a stock list, they shouldn't hit that. It should be extremely unlikely that that happens. Uh, not that we didn't have like a lot of stuff covered. Right. And I'm definitely bringing back in forces and I'm getting rid of these. Um, like you saw consign just sat in my hand the entire time. Right. Like that could have been a force. All right. So we're tied on clock, but this can be a grinding match. So I'm going to play briskly. We have a pretty good hand in my opinion. It's a, it's a vile hand. Uh, it's a frog hand. I keep so we have double white source in case they do. Um, white source also notable. We don't have any fetches, which means that if they have stifled, they're not going to find any purchase. Tameo. Three games, three Tameos. I think what we do here, um, if they flipper, it's not the end of the world. We do have frog to potentially attack and I do want to get this vial online. It's kind of, well, if they can't flipper and get a, uh, Doorkeeper throw in the same turn. They have the brainstorm shuffle. Like they have the whole enchilada here. They can attack, create a clue, then they can brainstorm flipper, and then they can shuffle away dead cards. So they have a very strong hand. They are living the dream over there. Sadly, I just don't think it's worth pitching a plow to stop this. Um, I could deeply regret this, but we do have three turns. We have a lot of cards that can reset her in our deck. Our Vile's online. I don't know if main deck they have any way to deal with. Well, they might have Prismatic Ending. That would definitely be a good card to bring in here. 
But I think Vile is definitely puts us, uh, we're not favored. We're on the draw and they have already flipped their Tameo and they have already seen, you know, 12 cards. Don't do it. No. Okay. Good. It's blue. Yeah. They're just cantripping their faces off. They still have a clue next turn. I think we have to shove with frog. Oh, wait a second. Did they play? They played Tamiya at turn one. I could have just bounced it with Crocus. I still don't think that's correct, though, because they had to have specifically something that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna show up here, and then next turn I can I can just play it. I'm not gonna force to defend this. Okay. Next turn uh, we can vial it in. So forcing force is really reserved for something extremely egregious like that doorkeeper's roll, and I'm actually not even sure if I'd force doorkeeper's roll here, because cards in hand is valuable. I could potentially pitch, um, you know, Plow, Solitude, even the Caracas, uh, to make sure that I knock enough loyalty off Tameo, and then I can have Force to defend. I think defend it, like defending a single Frog, their deck has four Plows. They don't have any Solitudes. There's a decent chance that they only have one removal spell this game. But if they're playing Prismatic Ending, which they may have boarded in, then they would have potentially six or seven even. Doorkeeper Thrall is fine. I have a plow for that. That's unfortunate, but um, they have three cards in hand. If it's days, that's really bad. But I would love to force this and then plow the Doorkeeper Thrall. I'm going to try it. I think there's a very high likelihood we get days here. Wow, that's great. Okay. So you're saying there's a chance. Okay, so they're tapped out. Yes, I'm going to use the ability. Another Psychic Frog is great. Um, I think what I do is I go ahead, plow this now, and because I don't want them to block. I want to knock loyalty off this. Okay, now we're going to attack. We're going to pitch. I think with the amount of loyalty on her, we we'll probably need to pitch two cards to ensure, because it'll drop to four. Feels bad to pitch lands, but uh, Vial is going to have to do some heavy lifting here. And then I can put in a second frog. And then that's like my backup kind of like draw condition. So this goes down to four and we're at least three turns away from Armageddon that way. I would love to draw like a Strix or something here. Drake, potentially very strong. Yeah, I'll just pass. So they still have that clue they can crack. I wouldn't be surprised if they had a, flat, a force or something. I hope they play some sort of creature that we can drag from them. That's fine. They're probably looking for a plow. I would just love if they just stifle not stifle it. Or if they just do some sort of thing like that. That would just make my day. Because this is basically uncounterable here. Also, I don't really want to, but I might take up into the three. What I'll probably do is if they plow this, I do need to keep the pressure on Tamiya, so I'll just vial in my frog and then probably have to discard to it. If they waste here, it's not the end of the world because of vial, but it's nearing the end of the world. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. And yes, I'm going to use the ability. I'm going to put in a frog. This... Um. I don't think I'm going to uptick it. Tameo is going to get pitched to a frog. Are we going to actually get two cards here? No way. Okay, I think the advantage bar just went to our direction. Felia is ridic. We have so many options with this file. Look at this. We've got three great cards we can put in. Um, This actually isn't that big of a deal. So... I can vial in Felia end step and then I can just blink uh, whatever they put into play out of existence. Uh, or I can just drake it next turn. I think this is fine. I actually want them, I actively want them to play out dreadnoughts here. And I can deal with potentially two dreadnoughts. So Felia is going to be what I put in in the end step, assuming they don't do anything to stop me. Noldrifter is unfortunate in that they're drawing cards, but we are going to take it from them. Sure. 
Actually, what I think I'm going to do is I am going to put in Felia, and then I'll just blink through Null Drifter so I can kill the uh, Tameo. Actually, what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to Drake it, and then I can exile um, the Drake and just consign it to Oblivion. But I'll have an Null Drifter. I'd rather have an Null Drifter than a Drake. Drake. We'll take that. Let's go to attacks. They are tapped out. I don't think they have solitude, so let's go ahead and attack. Two on Tameo. I'm not, let's see. I'm, I'm trying to think of a situation. We just want her dead. I don't really care about their life total. I'm about to completely destroy them. And now we're going to see, this is what the deck does. Bye, Tameo. Oh, wait. Um, let's see. One, two. We need to put one more power onto it. Felia will get a bonus. <laughs> and then uh, the Drake will come back into play and then it'll die. We're drawing two cards. This is just disgusting. This is precisely what I signed up for here. You're getting to see it. We're, we just swung the game so dramatically, so quickly. Whiplash. We drew another Drake. Uh, well, we're just going to pass. Our Drake comes back in, but we're, we're going to be... Uh, it'll be hard to lose from here. Okay. No legal targets. Done. Bye, Drake. You did a great job. You were a good, good dragon. And our opponent has probably never even seen a deck like this before because this deck has never existed before, not in this current configuration with the Flicker Wisps and everything. If they have, like, Wrath of the Skies, that's, like, something that might... <laughs> start to clean this up uh, because that would get rid of our vial, but we still have Null Drifter. They need Plow and Wrath of the Skies, I think, to get out of this. They're going to lose that clue next turn, assuming they don't want to give up a land, assuming they can't Plow our Null Drifter. If they put anything into play somehow, I am going to Drake it. Dress down's fine. Just desperately drawing. Please put a Phyrexian Dread Eye into play. That does nothing. Like, I can just exile it with Felia, and it'll die when it comes back. Unless you also have a plow for Felia, in which case I'll just drake it. I think it is better to just hold the drake um, than to get fancy, because Felia just is a clean answer to Dreadnought. I'm going to play this out. I think there's definitely a possibility. No, we're, we're I'm not going to risk this getting dazed. Um, I'll just attack here. They could stifle this trigger, which would be bad. Okay. I will like to draw two cards and annihilate you and do all that stuff. It works well for me. I would love to draw a land here. All right, land. Flicker Wisp. <laughs> That's a good card. Okay, I guess I already played the land for turn, so I'll just pass. They're so dead. Yeah, this is... Are they going to stifle this? No, they're sacking it to itself. Okay, that's fine. This has been a great game. This is like this is the kind of magic that I wanted to play, uh, where I'm doing, you know, crazy like difficult to do things, <sighs> shepherding them off to the pasture um, with my <laughs> doggo. God, so cool. I love this card. All right, we'll see you in round three. Round three, we're up against an unknown opponent. We have an es uh, an Aether Vial hand. We have plenty of lands. We have a Wasteland. We have Solitude. Uh, it's not matched with a white card, but I feel like this is pretty good on the play. I'm going to keep this. I mean, I don't know what I'm up against, but it's almost always correct to just jam the Vial. So what I think I'll do here is I'm going to go ahead and open Island just uh, because uh, I do want to be able to advance my game plan. And we will cast a vial. All right, Urza's Workshop. Vexing Bobble. That doesn't currently affect us too much. I don't think Solitude's going to be good here. I also don't think they're likely to waste us. I kind of want to hold the Wasteland for something better. I'm going to go ahead and just get Overlord into play, I think. Ticking down. I think that's better than playing a Baleful Strix here. We can always vial in Baleful Strix. So I uh, don't suspect they really have any interaction other than this Vexing Bubble. We get back a Psychic Frog. That'll be a good clock. Yeah, I definitely want to waste an Urza Saga. 
not Urza's Workshop. This currently taps for one colorless mana. And even if they get Metalcraft, it's still not that great of a land. I think I will probably waste Tomb here. I think I'll probably go Psychic Frog into Tomb. Okay. That's scary because they could have the uh, one of their eight keys. Thankfully, they don't. So I think cutting them off this is good enough. And I'm not worried with uh, Belfast Tricks. I'm not too worried about Urza Saga, although Urza Saga does give them a tutor. I think I'll probably have time before uh, Urza Saga counts down to go get the thing so I can find some way to interact with them. Best draw would be, well, not on land, that's for sure. Um, yeah, I think we just try to stymie their development here. There's no real reason to show them that I have frog. I'll just Strix first. Then I can play frog and step. Okay, another land. We really want to brainstorm here. This is pretty flood, considering we're playing 29 lands in an 80 card deck. If we can stall them off long enough, Overlord will do some real work. I'm going to keep taking a vial for sure because I do want to be able to have solitude. The one ring, that's unfortunate. Nothing I can do about that. Okay, they found a city. Do they have any other game actions? Like the worst, scariest thing they could do would be play a, um, another Vexing Bobble doesn't really matter, but they might crack it. And if they crack it, they won't have mana for a key, but you know, it does draw them one card closer to key. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in in step. Right, um, yeah. So this will go on the stack. I am gonna take it up. I'm gonna draw. I think the best thing to do is just get a Surveillant here. No, if we get a Surveillant, we can't get Yorian. I think we can get Yorian next turn. I just wanna make sure I have a good draw here. We'll do that. And if we they somehow miraculously whiff, um, there is a chance that we can get somewhere with um, Hitting them with frog and drawing cards. We can also go really aggressively after the life total. I can pitch like pretty much my entire hand is not relevant. I can get Yorian, which is another card I can pitch. There's the key. So I think most likely they're just going to untap and retap the ring. That'd be probably the least scary thing they could do here. It's worth noting that they can tap this. Uh, it just has one. So they have potentially four mana on the stack. Another key. Okay, we're really getting into the danger zone here. So I'm gonna be hitting them as hard as I can each turn with uh, Psychic Frog pitching like my entire hand basically. That's the end of the game functionally if they have any other spell to cast here. They do. So they untap literally everything. I'm just gonna F6. There's nothing I can do here. We can just watch and see if they somehow whiff. Uh, but like literally every card they cast they're gonna be able to untap everything. I just wanna see what their win con is. So I'm gonna stop talking and we'll just come back whenever they win. Okay, so we've learned that their deck does have Glaring Flesh Raker, so it was worth letting them pay it, play it out just to make sure that that was the case. I suspected that was the case, but we didn't know for sure. Uh, they're also playing Karn. So in terms of sideboarding, we can go ahead and figure that out. Uh, as usual, we're gonna be bringing in all the consigns and both the forces, and we're probably gonna be cutting um, Solitude is pretty bad if they're going to be playing. Um, yeah, I do, th I do think Solitude is bad uh, if they're going to likely have Bobble every game. I also think uh, Gilded Drake is bad, but Gilded Drake and they're playing Kozlux Command too. So none of this is a huge surprise here. I'm going to go ahead and concede. I think we've seen enough of the deck. I mean, like it would take them another few minutes to, to kill them, but like I realistically, I don't think that this, this match is going to go to time. Okay, so I think we take out Solitude. And I think we take out, because their only creatures are likely those um, um, Glaring Flesh Rakers. And if those come down, the game's kind of over anyway. I think we could take out Drake. So that, we we can put some cards back in. I think we probably put Drake's back in. I wouldn't mind Draking uh, their cards. And this is a blue card to pitch the force. I think we keep the remaining cards. I don't really want to keep Plow. It's pretty bad, but it is 
something we can cast to get rid of. And like, I don't think fairy is relevant at all. Uh, I don't think they use their graveyard. So let's just go with this. And these, these combo matchups are going to naturally be a bad matchup for this deck. Like it's not as bad as it would be if we were like playing like straight death and taxes, or there's a, bl a black white deck that also uses overlord and Felia and flicker wisp. Uh, but I mean, we're, we're obviously less cold to combo than, than those decks are, but we are kind of cold to combo. This is a pretty jank hand. It does have a wasteland and it has a consign and it has brainstorm, which we can use to fix it. If they have a slow start, I think we keep this and the plan is going to be turn one surveil in their instep, turn two brainstorm away some stuff and probably surveil again in their instep. I don't think we have any reason to fetch basics. So it doesn't matter, but I like to get the uh, the lands that can only get uh, island variants out of the way first, just in case we do want to fetch basics later. Just like a heuristic. It doesn't matter for this game, but I just want to get into the habit of doing that. Okay, and this makes me glad that I kept a wasteland. So there's an argument for hitting this, but I think we just let it go. They can just get another one off of the saga anyway, but they're, they're actually not going to get a chance to use the saga. I want to stop the card that this combos with. Black is actually a more important color. Actually, I'm going to keep that. I know I just said like I've got way too many lands, but that's a good land. It's good to have that as a backup because Urza Saga is one of their main ways that they can potentially win this. All right, and we just wait and try to run them out of lands. I will have to counter a, um, if they play like a, okay, they're not doing anything here. So I'm going to be chill with this brainstorm. Like again, we have a ton of dead cards in our hand. I don't think it's, worth uh, getting an imperfect brainstorm. I also don't think it's worth wasting that. So I'm just gonna go like this and I'll pass. And what we can do is just consign or more likely uh, just brainstorm. I will probably consign, I'll consign the one ring for sure. I might consign a, um, a basalt monolith. Okay, they're not doing anything. So this is a great opportunity for us to brainstorm and step. It's worth noting that they can instant speed Kozlik command. So the deck's not completely sorcery based. So we're gonna put back some of these lands. These are bad. We got uh, all three great cards here. And I'm gonna also go ahead and surveil. Why not? So we just got tons of value here. So uh, Flicker Wisp would be good. Gilded Drake is not good. I'm just gonna put it in the graveyard. That is something we can pick up with Overlord if we need to. I'm gonna play this out. And I'm just going to go ahead and get this online. I will use the ability. I will get back a Felia, which does flip this next turn. Uh, not next turn, but the turn after. So you can see, again, our deck is like super slow <laughs> compared to what they're doing. But we do have counterplay. We can potentially slow them down a little bit. And hopefully they just don't draw some explosive series of cards that we have to counter here. Because we can only counter one. Starting next turn, we'll be able to counter potentially two. Okay, so they have four mana. This is one ring mana. Mystic Forge is worth countering. This basically lets them draw, I don't know, like 20 cards. I don't think they have anything that can stop that. Okay, uh, Vial, it's kind of late to the party. Uh, do we want to start wasting their lands? I don't think so. I think what I want to do is just hold up the ability to Consign and Brainstorm. No, I think what I'm gonna do, I'll play that out and I think I'm just gonna go ahead and um, play a vial. It might be relevant. And so Wasteland, uh, I'll Wasteland if uh, they put a um, Urza Saga on the stack because I'm gonna waste it anyway and that can at least deny them a mana. But I imagine like every single turn they're gonna present some must counter threat from now on. That's fine. They do have Metalcraft now, so they these can produce two. Five, if this is Paradox Engine, if it's Karn, anything, I'll counter it. Something big. Yeah, this is Karn. So interestingly, I don't necessarily need to counter Karn here. So I can just, I can't kill Karn with Felia though. So let's think about this. Let's say I don't counter this, what can they get? They could get, um, Probably stuff that I have to counter. <laughs> so I think I'm just going to counter this. And uh, I'm not going to replicate it. I don't think that'll be relevant. 
The Null Elemental Blast is like the only blast they could be playing, and that doesn't hit monocolored permanents. Okay, they have another city, so they could potentially play a three drop or maybe even more. They do have uh, Mox Opal here. One ring would be pretty scary if they have that. I think I probably just need to let that happen though and get my Overlord online. I get Overlord online. Next turn, I have Brainstorm. Okay, I think the likelihood of us finding anything is low. Um, I'm just gonna, they can draw so many cards. This is a really, really quite a pinch here. Okay, so let's say hypothetically we brainstorm and we whiff, and we, we have to find one of six forces in 60 cards. So we have a three in 10 chance, essentially, of finding a force. And we also need to find a blue card. They don't have any mana to activate this further. I think we let them have it for now. I mean, they're going to draw a ton of cards. I, I just don't think it's... Because I, I think getting Felia is how I win here. So they draw a card. They could have like a Mox Opal that they could use to... But this could untap and they could draw... Okay, so that was it. At this point, it is going to be worth wasting one of these to deny them a little bit of mana, I think. I am regretting kind of playing out the vial. I don't think the game's going to last long enough for that to be relevant. Always yield. And I will take it up. Tameo is... Okay, so Tameo comboing is not necessarily bad. We can regrow a force. So I'm going to start by just attacking. And then we're going to blink this. Okay, we're not going to do any damage, but we are going to get a counter on Felia. We are going to get a trigger... I'm going to go ahead and play Tameo out. And hmm, I'm kind of tempted to just go ahead and hit both of the Urza's Sagas here. But I'm going to brainstorm first just to see what I find. So I do think flipping Tameo now is better than waiting. Okay, it's worth noting that we probably would have hit there, um, which is kind of unfortunate. I think we put these both back and... We can waste them next turn. And then now we have force negation up in case they don't find um, their card. In Okay, so we get the trigger. We're going to do eight damage to them next turn, um, which is good. I would like to use the ability. I'll just get back this Strix. Gilded Drake I don't think will matter here. Yeah, because uh, Gilded Drake could potentially take like a giant walking ballista, but that wouldn't matter. And in retrospect, uh, think, remembering that that was going to trigger I, and I would have a blue card, I should have grabbed the second force and, or uh, wasteland and wasted them there. So I, I kind of missed a land drop there. But yeah, that was suboptimal play. This is why I'm practicing, to try to like remember these triggers. I think somebody pointed out in the comment that I, like, I'm really bad at remembering, oh, this is going to happen. I need to map out what's going to happen. I seem confused all the time. <laughs> well, uh, a lot of it is this deck is very confusing and uh, I just don't have enough experience playing it. Like almost all every almost every time I'm playing, I'm recording as well. So you you have a very clear idea of how much magic I play. I'm not like Brian Cook who can just go play like, you know, four or five leagues in a day. Yeah, this is bad news. Um I think we let it go. We've got force negation next turn. It's like as though there's gonna be a next turn <laughs> that's gonna be relevant. And we can hard cast force negation next turn if we need to. We'll also have um I feel like if we, if we get enough turns, we can have a good thing. But they're going to draw so many cards. Uh, the real question is, are they going to have enough keys to untap both this and to add mana? So currently this generates one mana. So wasting one of them was important. Uh, wasting the second one is less important, but it's still... What I'll do with Tameo is I'm definitely going to regrow a consign. And then what I'll do is I probably won't waste. I'll hold up force and consign. Next turn, we'll see what I get off of Strix. Oh wait, I milled, I milled the waste off of uh, Overlord. I forgot about that. So it definitely was important that I put back. Did I put back a uh, wasteland and Baleful Strix? If so, then I inadvertently made sure that I would hit something other than Gilded Drake, which is nothing but a blue card to pitch to force in this matchup. All right, our opponent is uh, Legend rolling their city. I'm sorry if it bothers you when I say that, but I'm not sure how to say it. Like they're. they're um, they're betraying their city, I should say, maybe. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
That is kind of cool flavor. I hadn't really thought of it. Oh, wow. They're just playing this so they have protection. That's good for us because that implies that they um, don't have anything better to do. All right. So do we think drawing half of our deck is going to be viable? Like if we hit this, they only have one initial mana source. Um, I would love to find a wasteland for that. Let's untap it. Let's see what we draw first. Another force of negation. So we don't have a land. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bow this in just to see if I draw a land. And then we will go ahead and attack just to... Oh, wait a second. Is this relevant? This will be relevant next turn because we'll be able to instant speed disrupt something they're doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to Felia and Blink. Probably Blink Strix just to try to draw for another land here. So I get the trigger. Is it better to... I'm looking for non-creature stuff right now. Yeah. Let's just target that. Use the ability regardless. Uh, Flicker Wisp seems better than Drake, considering there's a Vexen Bubble out. What I'll be able to do eventually is um, kind of like Wisp the, the Vexing Bubble out of play if I want to. All right, let's go ahead and... Since we didn't find a land, we do kind of need to keep up Force of Negation. So I do think we just plus here. Yeah. And then we just have to hope that they don't have anything too powerful here. But we are amassing like a pretty powerful board that can do a lot of damage. Brainstorm is a good pickup. But we would have to brainstorm into um, Consign. Because Force of Negation is better than trying to thrash and, and find something. What will I counter here? I think that's fine. I think mana might be the gating factor here because they don't have it very much mana, even though they can draw a lot of cards. So I might hit a, um, okay, that does help. They just like quadrupled the amount of mana they can produce. We need to stop Paradox Engine for sure. We need to stop, and we need to stop Karn. I would say those are the two most important. Are they going to draw more cards? Yep. They're going to have to go to this card eventually. They could be drawing like, you know, um lotuses and stuff i think we just had to stop paradox engine if we stop paradox engine we'll be in a good place i don't think we actually stop karn because karn can get bridge but we can just flicker that out and kill them or we can definitely kill karn but bridge oh actually bridge is not even good because they're gonna have so many cards in their hand okay they're gonna go for the one ring again so i definitely think we're at the point where we want to force the one ring they might have more than one but they've already used one so they're not going to have more than three <laughs> or they're not going to have more than two. Yeah, this is a uh, grim monolith. I think is fine. Again, this does represent like additional mana each turn, but we're so far past that being an issue. This, this is basically like a dark ritual here. Yeah, that's another dark ritual effect. I mean, they have so many cards in hand that dark ritual effects are good. I think we just let them do that. It, it's not inconceivable that they could have enough keys that they could draw up to Something really ridiculous. I wonder if they're going to wonder. All right. That was my son. If you heard that. <laughs> Got back from the library. All right. They have so many keys that they can just draw basically their entire deck if they want to. They're using it instead to create mana. Again, like I think the main card we need to stop here is just Paradox Engine. Paradox Engine will be GG. Okay. Yeah, they have a lot of cards are going off there's paradox engine so blue blue i don't know that they play more than one they had to expect that something like that would happen so they're going to take five off of the one ring and they're going to take one two three four five six seven eight nine ten from us so they're not necessarily dead sadly okay they're cracking the bobble which is great for us hopefully they don't have a follow-up bobble here they do have a mox oval they play follow up bobble. I probably counter it. Let's see, what are they doing here? Another. Okay, so they're maybe they cracked it because they wanted to be able to play out their uh, different moxes and stuff. So minimize the amount of cards they have to discard. I'll take keys fine. They're getting more mana here. Would not be surprised at all to see a vexing bobble go on the stack. And if it does, Mystic Forge. They don't have any mana. I still think it's correct to force this. Because it allows them to just turn through their deck even more. I am 
almost I, I'm definitely going to regrow um, a consign here. Let's take a look at their graveyard. All right. Um, let's think about, is there anything we need to do before we go to our draw? I don't think so. I mean, Flicker Wisp is definitely the card we're using here. Just not sure what we use it on. I wish there was a way I could get two consigns back. Because I'm most definitely going to need them. I'm trying to think if there's any trick I can do with Flicker Wisp that somehow results in us. I think what I'm going to do. So this does represent an extra damage, but I think it's better to draw a card. Because if I can find. Uh, let's see. I've used all. I've got one Wasteland left on my deck. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do this first. The main problem with blinking uh, one, uh, one ring is that um, we can blink it to stop them from drawing cards for the turn, but they are going to get protection again. Yeah, I'll just draw a card. See what we got here. I think I take Gilded Rick. Just increases the likelihood that I... Um, it's a blue card for force. Okay. But there's no way that I'm going to overwhelm them counterwise. But I am going to get my uh, consign back. Oh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we can use this flicker with for before we pass. I mean, this is almost certainly like the critical final turn. We could brainstorm and potentially put some of these bad cards back. And along the way, find something good. I'm just trying to figure out what that good thing could be. A fetch wouldn't be terrible just to shuffle away some of these bad cards. Okay, fetch is good. I'm going to put away some... I'm going to put the, these redundant cards away. Play this out. Um, I'll fetch now because we're about to draw. I'll just get uh, another blue source. And we'll pass. So we do have them dead on board. Next turn. Okay, that's not helpful. But it is something I can brainstorm away. So they take five immediately. They drop to four. Even if we fog them somehow, or I think if we, even if they're able to somehow, hmm, I think we just have to let them draw a lot of cards here. If they get a Paradox Engine in play, we could just give them one trigger of it. It might be worth going ahead and flickering this to deny them mana as soon as we get priority again. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. So they could attempt to uh, do a giant um, Coslex command here to try to burn us out. But they know that I can counter that. So most likely they're going to have another Flesh Raker. But we did deny them a little mana by doing this. The one thing that can save them for sure from dying is casting another One Ring. So this we could counter. I kind of want to just see what... If we're going to draw a plow, then I don't need to counter this. Okay, we did draw a plow. So unfortunately, I can't both plow and consign. So I think it's better to just consign here. And then we still have one more consign up. I do think it's worth consigning this. And I'll keep plow up just in case plow is somehow more relevant than consign, but I don't think it will be. Yeah, we can't let them have this. They're, they're, they'll do a lot of damage and they'll generate a lot of mana. So now... Paradox Engine and the One Ringer are the only cards we can really afford to stop. We just have to hope they run out of mana. They they are starting to run lower on key activations. Okay, getting a lot of mana here. That's fine. <laughs> Ten cards left in deck. It's worth noting that Plow does save us if they do have like a... I mean, they're so low in cards that I think if we stop this, there's a decent chance they just can't win. I'm going to go for this. I, I'm genuinely scared that they use this. Let's see. They can Paradox Engine. They can. They almost certainly can generate enough mana. Hmm. If we don't counter this, let's think about this for a second. This is like the key decision. I mean, you could argue the previous decisions were also key um, because they put us in the position where we only have one mana. I think there was also a, a turn where I didn't waste when I could have. Okay, let's let's just stay focused. Um, they have sixteen cards in hand, so like assuming that they can cast all those, that will burn us out. And each spell they cast generates its own extra mana. But a lot of those cards, I think we need to stop the one ring. I'm gonna wait. If it becomes clear that I'm about to die, then I can plow, and then this won't deal the damage. 
and they'll have to get a Karn going. Yeah, so this is the worth like two mana and it's a damage to us. But we just have to stop the One Ring or Paradox Engine, either of those cards. And this is a great time in the comments. If you think I've made a mistake here by letting this resolve, please let me know. My hope is that they somehow run out of mana, but they have plenty of mana still to be able to cast the One Ring or Paradox Engine, so I do need a hold for that. Yeah, that's more mana, but I'm gonna let it happen. I mean, they, they probably have enough mana to cast both Paradox Engine and the One Ring. There's another key, that's more damage. Okay, this is the counter. This is what I waited for. Okay, and now we just have six and we see if we're dead. I imagine we are. They do have manifold keys. Um, they can generate plenty of mana to cast a backup one ring and get protection for a turn. But they can't profitably attack. They really do need to get Karn into play and go get a... Um, or, or they could cast Cosmic's Command. I think they're just building up a big Cosmic's Command here. There's Karn. Here's what I think they're almost certainly going to do. I think they're almost certainly going to play a one ring just so they have an extra turn to try to kill us. They have an extra, yeah, they have an extra paradox engine in their sideboard, so they're going to use that to win. So let's just, you know, be patient and let them play it out and see if they can kill us. They're probably not going to have time to kill us in game three if we can stop this, or we're not going to stop this, but if they whiff somehow. I can't imagine how they whiff, though. I, I think they have all the mana they need. Yeah, it's a tough matchup for sure. Uh, all these combo matchups are going to be really hard because we've diluted our Force of Wills by playing 80 cards. Even with the Force of Negations, we're still only like 45% here. While they're doing this, I'm just going to go over to the Hypergeometric Calculator. And so we've got 80 cards, and we're looking for six cards, six Force of Negations in the population. So we'll have 43, which is just slightly more than you would have with just four Force of Wills in a 60-card deck. And if you can, if you include like the, you know, those um, paradox or uh, consigned to memory, you're still getting like 62% that you're going to have some sort of counter spell in your opener. It's, it's just kind of like, this is definitely one of the worst matchups we can have in my opinion. But as always, I welcome feedback from you all. Yeah, they're, they're about to, they've got 25 mana. Um, I think they're just going to burn us out. Yeah. There's not really any reason to keep going in to do it just because I'm a masochist and I don't want to see my own death. So this is an argument for playing cards like Null Rod, which obviously interacts negatively with our Aether Vial and it's just difficult to find. So my thinking is when you're playing 80 cards, you don't have any sort of tutors or any card selection beyond the Brainstorm and the Surveil Lands. I just don't think you should try to play Silver Bullets. And that's my philosophy behind my sideboard as it's currently constructed. Good games. Uh, yeah, we got, uh, we O2'd that one. That, that is unfortunate. Um, I do think that we were kind of close, but it's diff difficult to say. I'm going to rewatch it and try to figure out if any of those forces were unnecessary, but we saw how powerful, um, the flesh shrieker was once it resolved, but at the same time they had enough mana that we could be confident and they had enough cards in hand that they would, we'd be confident that they'd find another way to resolve paradox engine. And that's the card you really need to stop. You see, even with the, the Karn in play, what they went for was paradox engine. Cause that's how they. All right, we are likely up against Esper Stoneblade, which I'm not going to mulligan against. I think we keep this. So uh, Geo Jimbo. Geo is a cell phone carrier in Japan, I believe. Uh, and then, but it could be like Yo Jimbo, which is a, a Kurosu, uh, Kurosawa film about a roaming swordsman. Really good old samurai movie. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have here. We do have the ability to go ahead and just throw Tameo out there and look like a blue-black tempo deck, and maybe that baits the for, uh, baits some card that we don't care about. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna try that because this is not like a degenerate start. I, I am pretty sure that they're on Esper Stoneblade with uh, opening Marsh Flats, or they could be on just like Black White. But you know, if they just play a Caracas, then you got me. Okay, I think they're probably gonna waste here. But that's fine. Like, they're going to need, also need to deal with this, so they're going to start accruing value. Okay, it looks like they might have the plow, and they do. So had we waited, uh, they would have wasted us anyway. So we could have opened this, and then th maybe they waste that. And then we have uh, the ability to daze. 
or I'm not, I'm sorry, not days, but we have the ability to brainstorm. So I do think that I probably played that sequence wrong. I'm going to play this out because I'd love to bait another way. So I've got so many lands and nothing to do with them. I am, I think I am going to keep this just because I do have the combo now. If they don't waste me, I can play her out and then I can brainstorm. And if they're on Esper Stoneblade or just straight black, white Stoneblade, um, we are in a pretty good place because they probably aren't, if they're on just two color, they're probably not playing Prismatic Ending and I'm not playing Prismatic Ending and all in my 75. So, okay. So Esper, er, Esper confirmed the reality chip. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. As long as the reality chip is attached to a creature, you may play lands and cast spells from the top of your library. Con reconfigure. So this is something that we can potentially, it's an 0-4 creature initially. This is something Felia can screw with. It is scary though if they do manage to equip it, but it costs a lot of mana to equip. All right, I'm gonna try to play fast because I suspect this will be a very long match. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to play this. I'll play this and I'll act as though I have, uh, you know, some sort of interaction up and I'll pass. And anything they try to do to disrupt this, I will brainstorm. I would love for them to force here if that's what they're thinking about. They'd force down to one card. All right. So it's worth noting that I could have Felia there but I chose not to. I really just hope they attempt to remove this instead of playing a creature. Like if they play a Mother of Runes or something, that'll be really scary. Okay. Esper confirmed. They're not, okay, interesting. Well, it looks like we're gonna get at least a clue. So we're gonna be up a card after this. I think I'm gonna go ahead and, should I play Karakas out? I'm trying to think of what they could do here. I think I play Karakas out and then I have Felia and I can end step Felia. Felia doesn't immediately do anything, but just getting her in play is not terrible. And of course, uh, I have Krakus to protect both uh, Tameo and Felia. I still, yeah, I, th I think it would have been also okay to play the fetch and then uh, brainstorm, and then if they try to remove in response, I can bounce uh, her and try again. Okay, they're passing without play, which means Felia's coming in. One thing to note is when Felia attacks, she does de-equip the reality chip. So reality chip is going to cost a lot of mana for them to keep deploying. They are probably thinking about forcing this. Because they, they paused for a long time last time, and that does make me think they have a force here. Oh, this is a creature. Check this out. Call me crazy, but I am going to happily drake that. I'll take your reality chip. Okay, so we do have motion here. Flash when Urtai enters, choose up to one counter target spell or activate ability to trigger. The controller draws a card, destroy another target creature or planeswalker. I think this is fine. I'm gonna get a card if they do counter this. So they are definitely on like straight up like Esper Stoneblade with fancy tools. Okay, what is this? Ability, counter target spell. Or, okay, I think they're targeting. Do we get to see what they're targeting? Okay, so they're targeting that. That's fine. Now what I'm going to do is I'll just hit. So one target spell or activated ability. So I could just blink this so I can get through. Um, I can also just play this out. And yeah, I think I just attack with Tameo. I don't think I'm going to attack with Felia. Because I don't want them to get this trigger again. Destroy another target creature or planeswalker. Its controller draws a card. Yeah, I don't think it's worth uh, getting that trigger again just because it'll fizzle anyway because I'll have to Krakus, um back. I think now is an okay time to flip Tameo. They could definitely uh, activate. Yeah, if they activate that, that's bad. But I can just bounce in response and they'll have used a ton of mana. I think I'm just gonna be patient. We've got a lot more cards than they do, and this Karakas is really important right now. This is gonna be a very much a thinking game though. <laughs> like I'm gonna be thinking a lot, because this is just like, there's so much to think about here. It's a flash, uh, three, two, and it just has the ETB. It doesn't have any other abilities, but it is something that can be equipped. Okay, they're not doing anything here. Um. I don't think we get greedy and crack a clue here. I think I'll wait. I am every turn that passes like is kind of good for us because we're making land drops. 
Speaking of land drops, it would be good if we could. So I think here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to attack with this. I'll keep Felia out. And I'm going to attempt to flipper. And I can also shuffle back some cards that are not useful. Let's go ahead and do it with this mana. They could have Orcus Bowmasters, which would be pretty scary. And we just have to see how they targeted it. Okay, they don't have Orcus Bowmasters. We got Overlord. That's good. That's a good reason to... Uh, but I, I think the reason we attack with Tamiyo is we wanted the, the counter. So I'm going to put this back. I'm going to put this back. I don't know the basics are necessary here. I'd rather have access to like just any color I need. Um, I think if they attack, I can just bounce it. It's not the end of the world. They can't target Planeswalkers, can they? I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get a Tundra here. I'll get... How did my underground seed end up in the yard? I think I surveilled it away or something. Um, oh, I can't cast Overlord because I didn't have black mana. Yeah, that's that's kind of an embarrassing mistake. Uh, flickering doesn't do anything. I think we just pass. And next turn, we'll have the Overlord plus Felia combo. This Caracas is by far the most important thing on the board right now for either player. Could just let this hit. Um... I'm worried if I bounce, then they have, you know, free license to just destroy target creature or planeswalker. Um, yeah, I'm just going to let it hit. I could block bounce and redeploy. I don't think that's correct. Tameo is just going to distract. That's her goal here. And I will draw a card in step. The scariest thing they could have is definitely Orcish Bone Masters. Trinity Nemesis is not that big of a deal, but they can use the reality chip with True Name Nemesis. Yeah, that's good. But we can always bounce the reality chip itself. Gilded Drake to take that. They almost certainly have... Yeah, I think we Gilded Drake, we take the reality chip. Then we can Gilded Drake to take this. They could definitely kill with... Yeah. Hmm. I think it's better to probably just attack in with Felia. But that would Kamikaze her. I don't know. <laughs> this is really freaking tough. Okay, Solitude does make things a little simpler. We could just take that out. Um, we don't have the ability to instant speed. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just attempt to kill this. I'll exile my flip. I have to be decisive here. I'm gonna hit that. Cause I'm gonna get it back with Overlord and then I'll just get another white creature back as well. Should I get the reality chip instead? It's it's this doesn't have an ETB, so I think it's safer to be able to blink that. Okay, this dies. Now I'm going to go boom, boom. Overlord. They are forcing here. Which is fine. Um, now, I think we just Drake to take the reality ship. That doesn't seem very good. Man, I really need to be able to get my swamp, don't I? I will get this as an investment in next turn. I'm not going to do anything this turn. Uh, it's not the worst. Yeah, I do want to land. Okay, I'm going to plus. Again, Feli is not going to do anything, which is sad. And step if they don't do anything. I mean, they're hellbent. But again, they can equip reality ships, so we need to be ready to bounce that in response. That's fine. They had a pretty good top deck. I actively want them to deploy good creatures, but not legendary creatures that they can bounce back to their hand. They are up three minutes and 20 seconds on me, uh, just because I've been thinking so hard. They have a lot of Stoneblade experience. If they find Stoneforge Mystic, they can break the um, break the shuffle, or break the brainstorm, and they can, um, as always, GTA is also pretty scary, and they can equip it. Yeah, it's, it's super scary. I'm trying to think. Yeah, they're equipping here. This is a problem for sure. So they can potentially kill my Felia here. So I'm just going to chill and uh, let them hit Tameo. See, whenever it deals combat damage, right? So the good news is Tameo is continuing to distract. Okay. And then if they attempt to use the counters to kill Felia, I'll just bounce her. But the good news is I can now safely attack. Okay, this is the Marsh Flats. So I'm going to plus her. Um, I think 
I could go ahead and just bounce the reality chip right now. But they're going to be able to like kill one of my creatures every single turn basically. So I just need to, I mean, this isn't really helping because they have pl plenty of mana to like just redeploy it. In fact, I'm really not even sure what I'm going to do in terms of like getting rid of this. Okay, so I'm going to get the swamp here just because we've been gated on, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and play this out and I can always bounce stuff to hand if I absolutely need to, to discard stuff to frog. I'll just target the GTA, forcing them to use the counters. How are they going to do it? This also de-equips. Okay, that one's fine. Are you going to do the, other, the second one on it? Okay, so now you are going to be able to use the reality chip next turn, if you'd like. But you're not going to have any mana. Okay. Yeah, I'm just treading water here. This is, like, I've, I've been saying, I'm not going to go to time. I'm not going to go to time. But, like, it's going to be really hard not to go to time here. They'll probably just kill Felia here since they have an op a window to do so. If they attempt to kill Frog, I will just discard. Uh, Drake cannot target uh, True Name Nemesis. So True Name Nemesis is just going to remain on the board forever, basically. It sucks. We can keep bouncing this reality chip every turn. Okay, they have their own Crocus now, and I think the game's probably over. I'm like tempted to not keep playing just because. So we're definitely going to do that. Playing these lands out does give us mana. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and fly. I'm going to go ahead and attack. That's fine. I will discard her since she's legendary, and Karakas is going to be a pain. No fix. We get a card here. That's good. Okay. Um, I kind of think we just play out the land, and we start cracking clues here. I mean, actually, that was probably a mistake because I could draw a wasteland here. I think I am going to go ahead and just do another one though. I just want to dig as deep as I can. That's really good. Um, they could equip here. That would be bad. I'm going to go ahead and just play another um, frog and I'll pass. And then I'll just pitch the, the vial. I don't think vial is so good that um, I, it might be better as a pitch. They are going to have the ability to potentially minus four and make us discard a lot of cards here. Okay. So you can see, we probably would be dead by now if it weren't for Tameo. She's really good. Are they going to plus? Okay, they are. And they are going to kill our Tameo, which is fine. And if they pass to end step, I will just go ahead and reality chip their, uh, or I'll, I'll Krakus the reality chip back. If they don't have anything else to do, they should attempt to equip it. It's fine. That's a good last card for us in terms of them not having interesting stuff to do here. They put Yorin in hand. Okay, I'm just gonna bounce this. So they're playing some sort of Esper Vial as well, but they're probably interesting. Okay, well this is good. I'm gonna go ahead and waste this immediately. I'm not sure if there's anything we can do to race here. Um, I think I'm just gonna start by attacking and see what they do as far as, like they might use some of these to try to uh, debuff so we don't do damage so they're not blocking we already I, I do think at this point it's okay to discard a card now they might target and get us to discard extra cards um i i kind of feel like vile is fine to discard i'm gonna do that too i'm totally happy if they use all their counters on me here okay we get two cards strix Okay, Strix is bad because it just dies immediately to a GTA activation, but I think it's still better than not doing anything. We do draw a card off this. Overlord is great. I'm going to go ahead and do that. We're at the point where drawing a uh, getting back a Solitude is not terrible. And I do think that that's what we get back. And then we just pass, and we have end step Felia if we need it. And depending on how they use these GTA counters, I mean, they could just go for pure damage, but Solitude will help us gain some life back at least. If they push damage, that will be actually probably the least scary thing they can do because we can hit them pretty hard too. So they can hit us for uh, nine here. They may just be saving up for an Alpha Strike. Harbinger 
Um, it's fine. I have the ability to get rid of it. Let's go ahead and play this out now. Okay, and they can start nuking our, our entire board here. Reality shifts back. Okay. So how much damage can they do? They can do three plus 10, 13. Flicker Wisp hitting Jite is not terrible, but we have to get Harbinger out of play first. Part of me wants to just uh, hit the Harbinger when we attack. Let's go to attack. I'm gonna attack with everything. I don't think it matters. It could matter. I'll get Harbinger out of play for now so that we can do stuff with our mana. I would love for them to start targeting things. That's fine. They're just gonna kill our Felia. You could argue that we should have gone for Overlord there, but I do wanna go ahead and, we're gonna draw some cards here. Uh, XL three cards. One, two, three. And then I'm gonna give this uh, XL three cards. Okay, now I'm gonna start discarding. I'll discard a land. Drake, I don't think it's very good here. So we're dealing six damage. We're getting them basically dead on board. Let's see what we draw here. These are good cards. Um, I can restrict their mana, which I think is correct. Um, we can hit reality chip with solitude. I don't think we can die that way. This doesn't give them any life. It just gets that off the table. And this is very hard fought. There's not really anything else I could do. I guess I could brainstorm now while I have low mana. You could argue I definitely should have done that earlier. Okay. Um, just put these back. It doesn't really matter. And we're just going to see what they do. Um, I'm going to get back Solitude. Uh, it's just the, it's not a trigger because I didn't exile it. I got confused there. This is why I'm practicing. So I, this doesn't happen at Eternal Weekend when like there's a judge being called because I tried to like grab something from my yard and it was just the overlord taking up. Okay. So I think we win unless they have something dramatic here. Thinking in 10 life. We don't have enough mana to flicker with their creature. So I think it's correct to just go to combat here. We don't actually even have an island, so we can't cast a fairy. Attack like this. I'm going to uh, exile three cards, give a flight. I think we're going to lose because I don't think we're going to be able to do enough damage here. Maybe not. Okay, let's and I'll give this flight. One. Now I'm going to discard. Basically, my entire hand to maximize damage. I'll distribute it across two of these. Yeah, this, I mean, this is extreme, but uh, again, it's, it's time consideration that's causing me to play like this. Okay. And we'll see what they have to vial in here. We're dealing 10. They can gain a lot of life, but they won't be able to kill us on the crackback, and we're going to gain life from Solitude, regardless of what they do, unless they uh, use a couple to kill Solitude, which they're not going to be able to use to gain life. So I'm pretty sure they do have to use the gain life mode. Okay. They conceded, but they're way ahead on clock, and this is a very clock-intensive game, so I don't think we're going to win. Uh, I don't have any sideboard substitution whatsoever. Um, yeah, I mean, we're pre-boarded for this. Like, this is not something that's on our radar when we're trying to sideboard. We're trying to sideboard against the top tables, and uh, this is not top table stuff. This is what we're playing, basically. I would argue it's like probably less optimized uh, because we just beat it. Uh, despite ha them having lots of equipment and them being able to execute their game plan, but we beat it and it took too much time because we don't have enough practice playing the deck. So um, I'm not sure how many different paths I went down that were completely fruitless, that were unnecessary, but there were probably a few. And had I just, you know, tunneled on Frog, maybe I could have played a lot faster. Their deck does seem pretty mana hungry. I'm really surprised that they're playing. Um, this is a keep. So what I'm going to do here, uh, I'm probably going to make the same mistake I made last time and just open with Tameo. See if they force them to have removal. So I'm going to get the island this time. And I'm aware, no, I'm not going to get the island. The underground sea. I should have just played out um, a tundra because now I've subjected underground sea to wasteland. I don't know that they'll waste. Oh, that's a good pickup. Okay, well, I'm just going to waste that and I'll replay. And we picked up the swamp, so it's not too bad. If we start to fall behind, I'll concede so that I can have a second chance in game three. That's a good card. So if we find a white source, it might be worth just solituding. 
No, I'm just going to go ahead and play one of my own and hope to get ahead. I imagine they are playing bow, uh, Bowmasters. Yeah, I'm not going to attack into that. But they can't attack in either because then... Wait, I shouldn't F6 because I have Force. If we force this, then it... it I'm just going to say Force for good stuff. I mean, I'm tempted to Force just so I can F6. I would love for them to attack in. Okay. But they can. They have the luxury of just being able to chill because they're so they're like six or seven minutes ahead on clock. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just play this out and I'm gonna bell mark. Bell mark will tick up, and eventually it'll generate enough value. If we can find, yeah, I don't really want to um, solitude anything here. I just want to naturally draw to solitude. Okay, they're doing something. You gonna bajuka bug me or something? No. Um. Consigning the trigger. Yeah, that is something you can do. I would not be boarding that deck, that card against this deck, though. They could consign the uh, trigger at the end, but maybe they don't think it's going to go that far. Six minutes on the clock. I don't care. It's really not that big a deal. The only way I use my graveyard really is uh, Overlord. And uh, Flip Tameo can use it, too. I concede. I just... Uh, see, they have three cards in hand. I'm just going to force this. This is a really important card in their deck. They, they've shown me that they have two basically dead cards in their deck already. So that gives me hope. We're one card away from casting Solitude. I do think Draking is good here. I'm going to Drake. Blue, colorless, let's Drake. I'll take one of your Strixes. They do have ways of bouncing them to their hand. Black, blue. I'll Drake. Or uh, I'll Strix. My board's bigger than your board. Start F6 again. They attack for Drake. I'll just let it through. Drake represents an ability for me to take their other strikes as well. Reality chip is good. Needs three mana to equip. I'll solitude it if I get the mana. Best card in my deck is Flicker Wisp. More cycling. Okay. Archiving. So next turn they will be able to reality chip and start going crazy with it. They definitely could have attacked there. Okay, I'm just going to hit the reality chip here. Altitude. Reality chip. So Overlord comes in, and then I'll just start bashing. Cryptic Coat is fine. That is something that can attack and generate card advantage. The Caracas doesn't really help me at all, but it is a land. I'm going to brainstorm real quick. They have two cards in the hand. If one of their cards is a Bowmasters, I'll just concede. It is not. These are terrible cards. Um, but some are less terrible than others. Okay. Oh, I get a flip. I forgot about that. I'll plus this. This should distract them. Wasteland. Uh, I can get them off. I'll just significantly hamper their white access. Okay. And uh, I do think we start bashing. No, we'll, we'll kind of like walk them into attacking us. Because we're going to have this soon. The trigger won't work, obviously, because of rest in peace. Can't be blocked. Okay, put Yorian in hand, which is fine. They don't have a way to deploy it, thanks to... I'm, I'm going to play this out just in case it becomes relevant somehow. Attack with everything. They can just hold back and kill Tameo, which is fine. I just want to do damage here. I think it's likely they block Sawtude. Okay, so I'm just doing two damage, but I've reduced their board. They can rebuild their board pretty quickly here. But I am going to have an Overlord next turn. They don't have Hardcast Force up. Oh, wait, I have Overlord now. So, yeah, this can't be blocked. But I may be able to find a land and get closer to Yorian. I'm not sure that Yorian's going to do what they need. They, they're looking at seven cards, though, versus me looking at one. I've put my cards on the table. They are going to have to keep attacking Tameo each turn, though. So they're not really in a position to bounce. They they might... Okay, that's fine. Uh, I still have Hardcast Force next turn. That's plus. Let's attack with everything. I'm not going to mill for no reason. It, although it will be nice if I know what's on top of my deck later. Wow, they're doing that. Uh, that feels good. I'm not going to um, pet, uh, F6 because I do have some time to win here. I think I'm going to just go ahead and do this. They'll probably recall Cryptic Code and redeploy it. Velia is pretty good. I'm going to plus this. Attack with the team. Deny, uh, decline the trigger. 
I'm just going to pass the end step. Okay, they conceded. We got it. We got it. Um, we are the better Valdeck for sure. Like, in, there's no doubt in my mind, uh, having played a league, which you can watch on this channel, of trying to jam. Um, first of all, they should never bring in cards like Rest in Peace or Consign to Memory. Like, I, th I think those are just very questionable sideboard decisions. Um, but I will say this was fun. It was interactive, and my head is tired. <laughs> I'm going to go take a quick break before we go to the final round and see if we can lock the positive record. A couple quick observations from the previous match uh, and a quick correction. So I said that like rest in peace doesn't do anything against our deck. It does. Uh, obviously I mentioned the overlord and Tamio re recurring things, but it does shut off the ability to give our frogs flight, which maybe they were concerned with because they don't seem to have a lot of flyers other than baleful tricks. Um, so I can kind of maybe imagine a world where it makes sense. Uh, so I don't want to like just diss my opponent. Oh, such a terrible card in the matchup. What are you thinking? But uh, generally, I, I think that card is just like graveyard hate is overplayed. <laughs> you really just bring in graveyard hate against graveyard decks, in my opinion, because it just feels so bad. It's a, it's a negative um, card advantage whenever you're like surgicaling some random card in the graveyard uh, to try to get quote unquote information and all this stuff. It's not worth it. Generally, uh, you're much better off just having a good card in that slot. The other thing uh, I'll observe um, real quick is that Overlord was really good there, even though the initial trigger was countered, which, so it basically was a two for one. Uh, this is Mulligan. I don't even know who we're playing, but this is definitely a Mulligan. David who? Um, this is probably a keep. I'm going to see if I can find some information about them. And the reason that I always do this is because so many people play combo decks and it's not just like sitting down at like a, a you know, paper magic, like probably like 50 to 75% of the decks that we face are combo decks. And you do need to know whether it's good to, you know, keep, uh, you know, a hand that doesn't have force. If there weren't so many combo decks out there, I wouldn't have to look people up, but I, I think it's necessary. And I strongly encourage everybody to look up your opponent before just in case they happen to be playing, you know, oops, all spells. In this case is doomsday, which can win on turn one, but hopefully won't considering that we have a force will here. Okay. And this may not be doomsday. This may be blue black tempo because that's a deck that plays those two cards underground C. Okay. So thought sees is played in blue black tempo. I think it's fine. I'm not going to fight over this. I'm not going to emergency brainstorm. I think that's almost always a mistake unless you're playing a combo deck or you just have some insane bomb in the matchup in your hand. I think emergency brainstorming is a mistake and they took the brainstorm anyway, which is fine. I'm going to get a surveil instead. I brainstorm. I find like some other cards and then they take like the force. So they take the plow instead, you know? Okay. So the fact that they took the brainstorm instead of the plow tells me they're probably not in blue black tempo. I'm going to get the city, uh, the under city sewers flicker wisp. Yeah, I, I think we keep it. It has text in a lot of situations here. They get their card. I'll draw my flicker wisp and then I'm just going to get ready to go get the meticulous archive here or to get a white source. If I need to plow something, if they attempt a doomsday, that'll be sad. There's under city sewers. I think it's less likely they doomsday now because they wouldn't have days protection, but not that they would expect my Yorian deck to have a days in it. I don't think any Yorian decks have days in them. I did mull uh, putting days into this deck, and I ultimately decided against it. No brainstorm into opposition agent. That's good. Surveil lands are so good. I am kind of contemplating potentially putting a third one in. We don't need another plow. We're not even sure that our opponent is playing creatures. They could just be playing. Oh, that's that's a good pickup. Okay, so here's what I think we do. They could very much daze this. But if they don't, we're in a pretty good position. So I, I just figured out this trick. I was watching Akalith, I think is his name. He's a Death and Taxes player. And this may seem like a sclerotic play. Like, oh, Flicker Wisp, what are you going to flicker? But we are going to be able to flicker one of these lands and get another Surveil. And that's not nothing. It's like half of a preordain. And our clock has started. I'm going to put this in the graveyard. All right, so we're insulated against both potential angles that doomsday could go if they play a frog we got a plow if they play a doomsday we've got a force yeah that's fine i'll just uh plow it i will attack before i plow just because um i'm very confident that i'm going to get rid of this strix quite good i mean it, it makes it up so we don't even really need to plow what i'll probably do is i'll pitch uh let's see what they're doing here they may just fatal push it 
Yes. So good for us. Okay, now check this out. Oh, okay. Well, how about I play this incredibly annoying creature <laughs> that's going to basically prevent your frog from being able to do anything. What do you have to say about that? They're forcing here? Well, guess what? I also am forcing back because I'm going to go up a card here. You're going to be at two cards. You're going to have a frog that can't do anything. That was a pretty good exchange. Okay, and we drew a psychic frog of our own. Ridiculous or disgusting, as my friend Dayton likes to say, when he, like, you know, gets insane value off of chaining Phyrexian Metamorphs. Okay. Uh, wow, that's an interesting play. Are you going to reanimate it? Is that the plan? Is this reanimator that just happens to be playing Mishra's Bobble? Merktide. Okay, that's fine. It won't be fine if they stop this days, uh, this plow somehow, but this plow is very important, so I'm going to be patient. Now we do have the ability in an absolute pinch to just go get um, Yorin and Solitude it. I think what I'm going to do, I mean, the safe thing to do is just not give them any days equity because they're almost certainly playing days. Did they have windows where they could have dazed earlier? I don't think so. I think I, I don't think I gave them a window with the Strix. So I'm going to assume they have a daze in their hand. And I think, I think I play Psychic Frog. I take a hit and then I'm like pretty far ahead. They could just have a fatal, fatal push for Psychic Frog. And then that way, like I'd take 14 before I'd be able to answer it with Yorian. I think the, the safe thing to do is just plow. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to be patient. I'm going to play tight. Okay, so they did have force. So we would have been screwed there. But now they're hellbent and we can play the frog. What do they pitch? Black, blue, frog. So if they top deck a frog, we're in serious trouble. But if they don't, um, and if they top a deck of days, that's also bad. Okay, they did find the fatal push, but now we know that we are going to be able to solitude this and we'll both be hellbent. And I think we're favored the longer the game goes. I am going to have a card though, so I may not be helping. Tamiya is quite a good card. However, we do need to get rid of this. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab my Yorian. And I am not going to mess around with the Merc Daddy. I have dealt enough damage with him before to know how uh, devastating he can be. And I've died so many games that seemed totally winnable because they had a Merc, die, Merc Tide. Now, if they Merc Tide again, that's a problem for sure but we will have at least one turn to chump. But I think likely they're drawing dead here. The best card I can draw now is probably a brainstorm just to insulate this. Plow's not bad by any means. I'm just gonna deploy this. And I have plow around days if they have a mean threat. This is fun. I like this match so far. I think they're just on blue black tempo and they haven't had a nether goyf yet. That's my read. Cause they're almost certainly playing nether goyf if they're playing Mishra's bobble. They can cut us off black. It's not the end of the world. We have a freaking Tameo. Tameo is going to carry us. It's assuming they can't remove it, we're just going to keep uh, one-sided howling mine our way to victory. Okay, another solitude. Makes me feel even safer. Don't have it. All right, good. We're getting the attack in. I am going to go ahead and activate now because uh, I want to find a land. We're being quite quick here, but we are down three minutes. Just be I don't know how. I always manage to get like down on the clock because I feel like I'm playing really fast. Could be my client is just chunky because we are playing on MTGO on a Mac. And I feel like every game action I take, like my clock ticks down like three or four seconds. Another goes fine. I do think I'll just send it farming. And this is where plow is clutch because when I send it farming, they can't readily redeploy it. Another psychic frog. We could take five, but I think it's best to just farm it because next turn they could have a blue card to pair with their force or something else. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and attempt to do this now while they have one card in their hand. All right. So even if they deal with this, we've got clues and we're going to have double frog as soon as we find a black source. But that, that wasteland was very good. Okay, their own frog. Um, I'm ahead in the frog off so far. I've got two looks at a land. If I uh, need to, I can solitude it. Okay, brainstorm is great. I'm going to attack first. And uh, they shouldn't be able to do anything about this. Instead of uh, 
cracking a clue. I am going to brainstorm and I'll just do this now. All right. We got barren, which is quite good. Um, we did find a swamp. We didn't find a way to frog. So what I'm going to do is I'll probably just put, I mean, they could still have days. I think it's worth just jamming the frog though. They hate, they're 40 cards in, like almost certainly playing days. I could just make them discard to do a damage and draw a card. I don't hate that. And then I can draw a card myself. Um, I think that's fine. And then if they're going to have to discard a card to get it to do damage to Tamio, then next turn I can potentially bounce it back to hand. And then I can, uh, or I can just play out my own frog around there. So they are doing a damage here, which is fine. Oh, they're, Put it, oh, they're really going in on this. So now I know for, for sure that I can uh, just bounce it back to hand and undo those cards they put on it, and I can take Tamio Pyre. So I'm I'm feeling like they're probably going to be scooping soon, but they might not scoop just because again they're like way ahead on the clock, and it does take my deck time to win. So it's plus blue blue Baron, which is a card that oh they got a card, so they could have gotten a days here. That would be very unfortunate. I did, I forgot that they draw off of Psychic Frog. They should definitely daze this if they have the option to do so. All right. So now they're going to need to discard. They're going to have to play it and discard more cards to do damage, and Barrett's going to be in the way, so they're going to probably have to give it flight. There's nothing I can do here. Okay, they conceded. So we didn't have to play it out. That's what I like. I like when we're like pretty far ahead and we just get to concede. And you saw everything lined up. Like we played really tight and I don't think we made any obvious misplays that I can think of. Nothing where I was like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm ho gonna hope to play tight again. Uh, the, we don't board at all for this matchup. Like if they're a fair deck, there's nothing to be brought in. So let's just run it back. Oh, uh, David Who said, love your content recording right now. I, I will tell them so um, as soon as I get a chance to. Thanks for your kind words, David. Uh, and yes, uh, the video should go live tomorrow. Okay, cool. Yeah, and if you're wondering my, my workflow, I whenever I play Magic, I record. Unless I do completely terribly, like I have some crazy brew and it goes like 05, I'm gonna publish it. I'm not gonna waste your time with like terrible decks that were not even fun or interesting. Uh, like. A lot of times if I play beans recently, I just get completely destroyed and that's not fun content to watch somebody struggle to like struggle against Eldrazi when they're trying to <laughs> draw cards and stuff like that. Uh, but in general, I publish everything. Uh, I'm a busy dad. I work full time uh, and I've got lots of other stuff going on in my life. So uh, I like to share as much of my life with you as I can. And the way I do that is just by recording every single time I sit down to play. And also that helps me get over embarrassment because it can be really embarrassing. You make a horrific misplay and you're just like, damn, I'm such a trash tier player. How did I do that? And like putting it out there anyway, like I'm not super proud of my play on the video that I just published a few hours ago. Um, the the uh, uh, Vile Blade deck, like the, I went to time two different rounds. It was really embarrassing. But uh, I hope you understand that like um, – I'm the man in the arena, right? I'm not like, this is, this has to be a keep because this has answers to Murktide. This has Tamio. Um, it does have Drake, which is really strong against them. And it has Overlord. I'm going to keep it. And I'm just going to hope that they don't have a waste happy hand. Okay. The thought season, which is totally fine. Like no single card in this hand is instrumental, but this does give them the heads up on Drake. I'll probably take plow. Is the best card in the hand. Uh, I don't have white yet. They might take Overlord. Tamio is also a take if they don't have a daze. If they take Tamio, that'll tell me they don't have daze. Because like I would 100% just let them keep the Tamio and then daze it and then waste their underground sea. Scariest thing this does is shows them that we only have two lands. And then one of them is an off-color land. But while they're thinking about that, the man in the arena speech by Teddy Roosevelt, one of the all-time greatest speech maybe the greatest motivational speech of all time not that i'm like big on motivational speeches and stuff i don't need motivation I drink some coffee i sit down and get the, get things done uh, i just the key to productivity is not reading productivity books it's sitting down and getting things done and getting into the habit of getting things done in my humble and yes there are people who have you know uh neuro um like they're not typical 
neuro wise, brain wise, and uh, they may want uh, some other source of inspiration and stuff. So I'm not talking about that. Like I'm not talking about anything like if you need to take like pharmaceuticals or something because you have depression. I'm not talking about that. But like assuming that you're just somebody who can get the work done, but you're just kind of like, oh, groaning and like, you know, I, and I think probably a vast majority of people are like that. This is fine. Uh, they can take my tape off. I don't have any way to stop it. They are going to get a clue if they uh, attempt to do the thing. But I mean, depending on what we draw here, we might Gilda Drake to take it. I think it's worth trying. And if they daze it, they daze it and we're kind of screwed. But I do want an Emperor of Bones. I did draw a Felia. I'm not worried about Drake killing us because we have lots of things we can do. I'm going to attempt to take the Drake. The, uh, they have to force. Okay, they force that. That's great. That's a great exchange for us because we don't really care about Emperor of Bones. Drake is kind of scary to be under Emperor Bones because they could potentially take it, but we are going to get rid of Emperor Bones. We just want to try to Drake it first. They could put Drake under and they could attack us for seven here. But Drake would instantly die when it gets put into play, actually, because there wouldn't be anything to swap it for. We'll see if they try to do that. I think what they're probably going to do is just adapt and put Tamio under there, or they might just wait. They may have a second play, like a frog or something. They don't have a wasteland, which is the big thing. So next turn, I'll just overlord. They don't have a daze. Most likely they might find a daze off this ponder because they definitely would have dazed that Drake instead of uh, killing him. I do think getting uh, Emperor on our side and being able to exile their cards. Oh, so they they could have very much found a wasteland there. I, I misspoke. I thought they had already made their land drop. Okay, that's such a relief. All right, so um, options. One, we could just uh, we could plow. I think we could plow and we could overlord. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlord and then no, I'm going to plow first. And then if they counter the overlord, I'm not, I'm not going to cry about it. I'm going to get a basic planes here. No, I'm, I'm not going to play cowardly. I need blue. I'm just going to go ahead and attempt to plow here. See what happens. I could definitely Drake again, but I don't want that to, and maybe that was cowardly. Uh, maybe they're like, they're going to just play something much worse now. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'm not sad when that gets countered. It's not that big of a deal. We have a lot of cards in our hand, and Feli is going to be really good against a lot of stuff they can do. If we can get enough mana and start hard casting, Solitude will be very strong. I do kind of think it was a misplay for me to plow that. I should have probably attempted to Drake a second time. I'm just going to pass, and I've got Felia in step. And Felia, even if it's not doing anything, it is attacking for two. Potentially, like, you know, blinking their... Uh, their creature out of the way. So I appreciate the fact that my opponent seems to be playing the fair black, blue black version, uh, which is a lot more fun to play against than the uh, into into uh, reanimate. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go blue here. They're passing priority, so I'm going to go ahead and Felia here. And if they have, if they're going to push my doggo. That is okay with me. Looks like that's what's happening. Go for the throat. Oh, such bad visual. Yeah, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna force that. Belly is not that important at this point. What's important is that I just keep drawing land and staying alive. And speaking of drawing land, that is a surveil land which will help us find another land. Um and I think that's more valuable than putting a Yorian into our hand. Because I think most likely this force is gonna be pitched to Gilded Drake if they cast something like a giant Merc Tide. They have two cards in hand. Alright, I'm gonna go for the land. I'll just get the undercity sewer. And you'll note that like we just don't use Wasteland in this matchup. It's, it's generally like we might be able to screw them, but I don't think it's great. Um, I kind of want to draw this. No, we've got better stuff to draw. I want to get to a land. If they reanimate it, it's not the end of the world. We can we have so many ways of bouncing it and flickering it back. Uh, I'm gonna Yorian. I'm not gonna pretend that like I have some great like in, right, and we have several ways to force, but we are dazeable if we force something here. So my hope is that they don't have a wasteland. That's the scariest card they could produce here. Okay, and they don't do anything. All right, Vile's great. I think we just plopped on the Vile. I mean, it's gonna start taking up and it's gonna be it's gonna start being pretty menacing here. Yeah, Vile is so strong. Even late game, like a lot of times you'll see me like surveil it or or pitch it to a frog or something. But like in a game state like this where nothing's happening and we know they're playing a lot of counter magic. Like instant speed Drake, your your Merc Tide, and you can't do anything about it. Like that feels so good. A quick thing. I'm gonna yes to this trigger. 
The, the clocks are pretty close. Again, I am behind. Oh, that's great. So we can get the other surveillance here. And we're almost to um, Hardcasting Solitude or Hardcasting Force. They, I have no idea what they're drawing, but uh, I assume they're just drawing lots of counter magic and removal. So when you Drake in, they do have a window to kill. So if this is a Merc Tide, I will attempt to Drake it before I attempt to, to uh, plow it. I think that's correct. Because if we can Drake it, the game is over, basically. They don't actually have very many cards in their deck that can stop it. And taking a hit from Merc Tide is not fatal here. So we do have a turn. I'm not going to try to rush it. Teferi is insane. Teferi is so insane here. Okay, so I think what we do, we're going to draw Teferi. We could get into a force fight over Teferi, pitching Yorin. And I think that's likely what's going to happen. I think likely they're going to have force of will. And then that guarantees that like we can um, we can Drake and they can't interact with Drake. And I think that's better than um, yeah. like I can't see how they don't force this if they have a force. They could be playing Spell Pierce, which would be very clever. Teferi is in. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to take their Murktide. This is very savage. Take their Murktide. And then I'll just bounce <laughs> this back to my hand. Okay. They can go and do stuff, but they can't actually interact because Teferi's in play. They can't. Teferi's too powerful. I wouldn't be surprised if they just scoop. Now I'm going to bounce this to hand. I'll play a land for turn. Yes. And we are in overwhelmingly dominant. Uh, I figured your hand was removal. Okay, so they are they pieced out there, but uh, they did say thanks. Uh, great playing with you, David. I think we've played before, and you're a strong player. Uh, your draws just didn't line up, and uh, this game is, you know, we're favored the longer the game goes on. So that is a positive record, a 3-2. We lost to, I think, two combo decks. Uh, let's take a look. I can't even remember because this was yesterday, uh, what, what we lost to, round one. Uh, let's go. We can actually do a replay from here and see what it was. Seven seven minute match, it's pretty short. Are they gonna let us view the replay? All right, it's working. Okay, so I'll just click through here. I can't remember what the first round was, but I mean, you you probably already rewinded the video. Oh, did we lose to Carnforge twice? I think that's what we ha what happened. So yeah, we're beating the fair decks. We're like okay. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this deck because I played it in paper. I have this deck in paper. Um, I'm, uh, no, I don't want to close out. I I want to go back to the deck list. Okay, so. I love this deck. This is, I'm seriously considering playing this at Eternal Weekend instead of Blue Black Tempo. Why would I play a deck that nobody else plays? It's like a rogue deck. Uh, very few people are playing it and nobody's playing my version, which is like all in on the, uh, the Flicker Wisps, right? Well, here's why. Flicker Wisp is insane right now. Nobody's playing Bowmasters and that's really why people stop playing Flicker Wisp. But Flicker Wisp hits Gilded Drake, it hits Baleful Strix, uh, it comes in instant speed and protects your other creatures, uh, it, uh, of course, flips your overlord. Uh, the big thing is just like, you know, redraking every turn. That's so powerful. Um, but I think that Flicker Wisp is great. But so what I'm really doing that's different from the other Esper Vile players is I'm taking out the Recruiter of the Guard. And we have no silver bullets. We're all four ofs. Okay. Like if you, uh, you know, aside from like the land and stuff, everything is a four of except for Baron. Baron's like the one exception to the four of rule. And you could argue that Baron might be better as a Teferi. Teferi is very strong. Baron's like not that great. Um, but I think the all the rounds when Baron came in, he was probably better than Teferi. And the the dream of being able to bounce something off of uh, like off of a vial is is great because like they've got like lethal pressure. They put a bunch of cards into, um, you know, a psychic frog or something. And then you're like, boom, Baron, let's bounce it back to your hand. Really strong. But I played this in paper and it just felt amazing. So I did, I think like maybe like 10 games. And so what we do usually is we play like a couple games, me and my friends, when we play test in paper, uh, we play just like one or two like pre-board and then we do almost all the other games post-board because realistically, most of your games are going to be post-board and it doesn't really matter whether you lose game one because you know, you're going to have post-board you're going to have a lot more stronger. So what I did was I did focus testing against both uh, Mono Red Painter and 
Blue Black Reanimator, which are two of the four top decks, I would say. I would say the other uh, top decks are Eldrazi and uh, uh, Moonstompy. And this deck just completely cleaned up on them. And they play those decks. Like my friend uh, John has been playing Red Painter since I met him like uh, two years ago or something like that. Uh, and my friend Dayton has been playing Blue Black uh, Reanimator since, you know, Rescam. Uh, maybe like six or eight months ago when people realized, oh, that's the best deck. Everybody should be playing that. So they are deck specialists who blew that. And I just completely mopped the floor with both of them. I think I lost maybe like three or four games the entire day. And we probably played, I probably played at least 10 or 12 games. So like very high win rate. Um, Two of the games I lost were against Blue Black when my mana just failed me. And so what I learned from that situation is even if you have a Fairy Macabre in your opening hand, so I, there was a game where I had Fairy Macabre, I had um, a Solitude, I think, and a white card, and I had like, uh, I think I had like a Wasteland, and I had a Vile. So it was like a Wasteland Vile hand. And I think uh, like the Vile got like taken out or forced or dazed or something, and then I just never drew any, I kept drawing Wastelands. So this is why the, the list you're looking at does not have four Wastelands. It has three Wastelands. And I swapped that one of the Wastelands for a Scrubland because I believe that Scrubland is pretty damn necessary in this deck because you want to be able to have both Felia and Overlord in like basically the turn cycle. You want to be able to end step Felia and then up uh, next turn cast Overlord and then attack with Felia and blink Overlord. That's the dream. That's like the dream turn three. And um, in order to have that dream turn three and also be able to have turn one island into you know tamio island into vile you'll notice like almost all my fetches do fetch island i think it's still even with like all the white and the black you do want to have your basic island under you uh a lot of games and yeah so so my usual fetching pattern is island into um vile and i almost never fetch the basics unless i specifically know that my opponent like against a a wasteland matchup, I won't fetch these generally. I don't think it's correct to, because you do have a lot of color requirements and you don't want to get color screwed. But if you're just fetching your island, then you know you're going to have blue for the rest of the game unless you're playing against Eldrazi. And then uh, you can just uh, go get the Scrubland and then you've got your colors. And even if they waste your Scrubland, you know, you've you've probably gotten at least one or two of the spells out on the table. So uh, Flicker Wisp, Gilded Drake, like I was really low on Gilded Drake for a long time. I was like, man, Gilded Drake... It's too hard to play, and like, and, and I think it's a skill issue. I think Gilded Drake is one of those cards that probably like ninety percent of people who pick it up and try to get go, you know, try to try Esper Vile, they're like, why am I playing this terrible card? I just gave my opponent the creature that killed me, you know, so I could take like, I'll Gilded Drake strikes us. I'll Gilded Drake anything basically because it's almost like Gilded Drake's still on my team. He's just like a double agent. He's just chilling on the other side of the enemy lines. He's still attacking. He's still got to act like he's on the team. But the moment Flicker Wisp comes out, the moment Felia comes out, the moment uh, Teferi comes out, we saw that in the last game, uh, the moment that uh, Baron comes out, again, 10, 11, 11 ways of getting uh, getting our agent smuggling him back over to our side, right? Like that is just so cool to me. And um, yeah, you're going to take like 6, 9, 12, 15 damage off your Gilded Drake sometimes. I've done it, but I've still won some of those games. And yes, I've lost a lot of games to Gilded Drakes, killing me. But I think with Strix, with Flicker Wisp itself, also able to trade with a Drake, I think, and with Plows and Solitudes, I think we're less likely to die with Gilded Drake with this version than we've ever been able to. Like, So uh, so I did just like a lot of soul searching, went for a long walk and like, man, Gilded Drake, like I own four of these, you know, <laughs> they were expensive reserve list card. I got them from Japan. Uh, I'm actually kind of dreading going to eternal weekend and playing this deck because all my drakes are Japanese. And I'm sure like every single time I play it, there's going to be a judge call and like, what does this card do? And it's got like tons of like freaking Oracle text. Actually, I'm not sure what the, let's take a look at the Oracle text, uh, uh, Gilded Drake. And I, uh, I apologize if the rambling and stuff at the end of this uh, episode is a little less, um, a little longer than normal. Not that I've ever uh, been, not that anyone's ever accused me of being a terse person. Uh, I'm no Calvin Coolidge. Okay, when Gilded Drake comes into play, okay, so this is, um, that's the old text on the actual physical card. When Gilded Drake enters, exchange control of Gilded Drake and up to one target creature and opponent controls. I should just get like this tattooed on my arm or something, but then if they change the, uh, 
and and then I'd have a tattoo <laughs> that I'd have to like remove in my old age when I like came to regret it. I'm sure lots of people have tattoos that they don't regret, but I have like zero tattoos. And I've just always thought like, uh, it's so expensive to remove them and it's probably very painful to remove it and to get the tattoo in the first place. It just never made sense to me. Anyway, if I were going to get a tattoo, I'd probably get my blood type tattooed on my arm. But if I were going to get a second tattoo, it'd probably be the oracle text of Gilded Drake, so I wouldn't get a judge call every time. Or I could just, you know, pay $150, $200 and get another Gilded Drake in English and then keep that. My, one of my friends has Japanese cards, and he just keeps an English version of the card in his thing. But the oracle text has been is different, right? Um, this ability still resolves if its target becomes illegal. So it's just like a little bit clear, more clearly stated in 2024, like magic verbiage. But basically, yeah, like the, the card text doesn't change a lot. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be rocking the Guild Drakes and I'm going to be getting a lot of judge calls and that is okay. The judges are going to be well acquainted with the guy who, that jerk who got Japanese uh, Guild Drakes. I saved a ton of money getting Japanese ones. <laughs> the English ones in theory are like way less expensive than the Japanese, but I just found like ridiculous deals. I found like this single person in some, you know, part uh, like far flung part of Japan who just had four of them. And it was one of those things where it's like, oh, this looks like almost too good to be true. Like, is this, am I really getting Japanese? And he, I talked to him and was able to get him to like do combined shipping and everything, the perks of speaking Japanese. But, uh, but yeah, like it was a great deal. And <laughs> don't be afraid to try to like get international stuff. Like eBay is pretty safe. And, and uh, I think the one time I've gotten a counterfeit off eBay, it just got taken care of. And, and I do test my cards. I'm confident these drakes are real. I did like the, uh, the flashlight test and, and did like the green dot test and all those tests you always do on your cards. Make sure they're real, especially your old cards. So um, yeah, <laughs> sorry. I don't remember how I started talking about Gilded Drake, uh, but <laughs> uh, it's a great card. And I feel like it's one of those cards that, this was printed like 25 years ago and it just continues to be like a ridiculous card that like there's nothing is like this. Like it's the most undercosted effect, but it's hiding in plain sight because people don't want to include it because it's, it's too high risk reward for most people. But if you build your entire deck around being able to blink Drake and the blink overlord, a new great card to blink, then I think you can really harness a lot of power that people are overlooking. And that's why, um, you know, my friends were just stunned at, uh, at how effective Overlord was. And they started asking me about the other Overlords. And the main problem with the other Overlords, like a lot of people are like, oh, why don't you include the blue one? And maybe you could just go straight blue, white, and not even have to have like all this black. But like you do want to have a Psychic Frog. I mean, come on. But like, let's say like the, the problem with the other Overlords is they cost more than two mana to put out. And two mana is like the absolute, like if this were a three mana effect, even if it was way better, I don't think anybody would play it because three mana is just too much in Legacy right now. I say that and I have Teferi's and uh, Baron in my deck. But I gen I generally think that like if you're paying three mana, you really need like a Teferi level card that just completely warps the game that they have to force. I mean, if somebody puts a Teferi on the stack and you're not forcing it, that is an extreme circumstance <laughs> in terms of the game state that you wouldn't force a Teferi. I'm trying to think of situations where you wouldn't do that. Maybe if you had like... Uh, a bow masters in your hand and you were just and they were hellbent other than the very you're like sure and then they draw a card and then you you play the bow masters next turn or something i don't know when you wouldn't force if you didn't have uh an immediate way to remove it so anyway i'll stop rambling but this was great this felt really fun and i'm gonna just play this exact list well not the exact list that i just played i am making the uh, scrub land for wasteland substitution uh so 29 lands uh all of which produce color except for wasteland and uh the other thing I've done is I've, I've gone down to one Karakas. It was very really strong there, but it really sucks to like have that when you have like, like, Oh, I drew my second Karakas and I'm trying to cast a Veilful Strix. I think that like Yorian loops, like how many times did I actually cast Yorian? I don't think I ever cast him. Did I? But mo most likely I'm just getting Yorian and I'm using it to pitch cast solitude or I'm pitching pitch cast force. Or by the time Yorian's like even in hand, my opponent's conceding because they realize, Oh, he's, Gonna Yorian loop me. And you have to have Crocus to actually Yorian loop, but if you have a Flicker Wisp, you can Yorian loop. If you have a Felia, you can blink Yorian and, and do all this stuff. You don't necessarily need Crocus, and Crocus is a utility land that's brittle. I don't like to play lands that only tap for one color that also get wastelanded. Like you'll never catch me playing uh um uh, Odawara, I think, or um, you know, Tak Takenuma or any of those uh like Japanese so uh, Boseju. I, I would I don't play those. Like I bought them and I kind of regret buying them because I've just never, I, I, every time I play them, I'm like, damn, why the hell am I playing this? Like it's going to get wasted and I'm going to be not able to deploy the threats in my hand. So that's, that's kind of how I feel about utility lands. I think the only utility lands worth playing ever 
that you'll probably ever see me play are Caracas and Wasteland. So anyway, that was a, another non sequitur, you know, take, <laughs> maybe a spicy take uh, from Be Excellent. But I am wishing you until next time we meet, maybe I'll have another video tomorrow if you want to tune in and watch that and learn more about this deck. Be excellent to each other and party on.